categorized more or less, but overall 1 million people worldwide affected annually and wide range of symptoms both in animal and human. And looking into the spreading Sir, we can't hear your voice, sir. and the screen also is not visible. Okay, so take Hello? Yes, sir. I was speaking with uh, Neha's parents. Yeah? Yeah, this is Ashish sir. I'm calling from Akash. Huh? Akash? Yes, sir. Tell me, sir. Yeah, Neha is in love, right? Yeah. No, sir. He's talking with the phone. Yeah, tell me, sir. I think Dr. Paraman is a disconnected part of me. I think too much art is yours. Okay, okay, sir. I actually I will discuss, sir. Uh, some slide I will share it. What is the constraint and other things? Okay. What are the facilities we have? I think uh, I want to put it to the forum. Yeah. yeah. Uh, change slide. Okay. The slide is visible, sir. Yeah, yeah. You may. Okay, okay. So, good afternoon to one and all. Here, present here for guests and dignitaries, and uh, I take this opportunity to thank uh, organizer, especially Director Niab and uh, Dr. Faisal, for giving an opportunity to share our views in this uh, workshop. So, actually, uh, most of us know in the forum. So ICR Nivedi is one of the pioneering research worker in the field of leptospirosis. I was working in the institute from 2009 onwards. So last 10 years, I will update you what work we are doing and what are the constraints for the future work to be taken for the benefit of the nation and the research area of leptospirosis. So actually our major focus of research is an epidemiological study, prevalence of leptospray and livestock to address the prevalence of emerging of latest zero war, which will help in turn to identify the diagnosis for the human as in the 
referral lab as well as for subsequent uh, taking the necessary treatment and control program. And the second area we are working on development of effective need-based diagnosis for screening and as well as for the surveillance purpose. And the third work uh, that epidemiological related inspector identification and uh, impact assessment of leptospirosis in human as well as in uh, livestock. And we are also providing capacity building training program for the uh, lab those who are working in the country through National Center for Disease Control Program at Government of India. So these we are at, at a, as of now we have different project from different source ones ICR early ICMR and uh, Institute Service Project and uh, NCDC project as of now we are handling. We have a lot of collaboration with uh, Human Institute as well as the Animal Institute for handling the, this one. These are the facilities what we have for uh, basic leptospira research and application. We have uh, starting from the diagnostics and uh, start to the uh, important training program. So we are maintaining as of now more than 30 zero hour reference zero hours providing the MAT diagnosis in our uh, laboratory. The major source is from uh, WHO referral laboratory from ICMR. I thank uh, Dr. Vijaychari giving from the beginning for the support to the Nivedi for maintaining the zero hour and his guidance and support. We have grown this lab up to this level and we are the one of the national uh, referral laboratory for animal leptospirosis as uh, recognized by the NCDC India. So these are the sample we are regularly screening for leptospirosis for the different uh, diagnosis service purpose and starting a zero epidemiology research work also we are doing uh, per, through microscopic acclimation test. We are screening the sample for more than 20 zero hour representing the 25 zero group as of now. So we are planning to increase our zero group that is the maximum available in the world is 30 zero group. So we want to include to identify the any epidemiological changes in the field, especially in the livestock population. So these are the some of the study we have conducted from 2011 and different states in overall it is showing that around 35 to 40 percent of prevalence. So this is Orissa. This is again uh, um, Kongan region of Maharashtra around 40 percent different species. And again, Maharashtra states, this is Gujarat around 25%. Uh, we are uh, doing for uh, different endemic states uh, over a period of time to identify the prevalence here war in this region. These are the publication out of that. So we have uh, also characterized the isolates uh, from available isolate earlier in uh, Pediatmas. Then we identify the intermediate species here are also prevalent uh, in India. That is uh, Leptospira wolfi identified uh, during the 2003 among 55 zero group uh, isolates earlier we had in that. Then endemic states we have also done for different states in the coastal area. And uh, these are the again Andhra Pradesh. Again, uh, only we are doing the purposive sampling in the reproductive problem associated animal. We found that around 50 to 70 percent prevalence is there. So this is the another alarming for the dairy farm. And if you are doing only for the Ozo zero hour, that is it as per the um, international prevalent also the maintenance zero hour, we observed that around 12 percent, but in other zero hour prevalent in the country. So we are recommending that those should not be used for the only also zero hour available kit from the country, uh, different uh, country. So it is no use for our country. So other zero hour prevalent for that we have to plan for the multiple uh, zero hour based vaccine for the country. So these are the some of the zero hour prevalent in uh, different uh, species we have done. This is a zero hour study in uh, Telangana farm wise study. This is uh, Assam that is northeastern region of study. We have studied different for the period of three years. Then is, it is indicating that uh, some of the emerging zero hour that is the alarming for that from the endemic uh, region to non-endemic region. That is generally the coastal uh, region for this are endemic region and uh, Non-endemic regions are, uh, I will show you in other slide, that a predominant uncommon zero are emerging, that is uh, mini, manho, and cytopathy, and sermani, and intermediate zero are asbatch. So these are the intermediate strain zero are also nowadays uh, we are detecting in the uh, sample because we are included the more number of zero are prevalent in the system. So this is again Andaman Island, a recent study we have taken up, that is prevalence around 17% in livestock population. In Assam, it is around a different uh, 26 to 18 to 26 percent. 
so here again Pen pennsylvania stay that is portion that is southern india in sheep and goat population we have done again 40 percent prevalence these are the major zero were prevalent so animal and inter human interface that is collaboration with the uh, other human side we are okay, prevalence of zero war that is especially uh, zero positivity case in uh, identified case for uh, human case it is around 96 percent with the help of mat we can able to identify the case Similarly, neuroleptospirosis case, we are also helping to the NIMANS for the most of the patient. And if it is prevalent around uh, positivity, we observe that 60% of the population. In pyrexia of unknown origin, that is around 40% of people are having the infection. That second one, we are having the different protein expression for development of the screening test at the field level and uh, district uh, laboratory level for ELISA. So for that, we have having different number of protein we have uh, expressed, that is more than 10, 15 protein we have expressed in the ICMR project. And uh, some of the promising protein we identified that we are further working on development of the latex agglutination test, LFA and ELISA. That's we are working and number of publication we have done. And uh, subsequently, the epidemiological analysis and service also we are giving to the pharma. Uh, different type of form and you must say in the Mumbai outbreak also we are the part of that and we are identifying the uh, survey giving the service to the uh, veterinarian as well as the human side and we identify the uh, similar to the uh, referral lab result and we have helped them and epidemiological analysis of the different outbreak we are collected and we are providing the capacity building training also. So we have so far four or five training we have conducted through international agency CDC Atlanta Along with stakeholder meeting also, we have uh, conducted for three meeting through support from NCDC for giving the national strategic plan as well as the, what are the issues has to be taken. These are the some of the uh, glimpse of photo for that different meeting. And we have linkage collaboration. Now we are recently we have made collaboration with the NIAB for MOU establishment for uh, animal leptospirosis, human leptospirosis, and also the microscopic agglutination test. So we have a number of uh, collaborators with us for uh, these are the collaborative research uh, output publications and uh, MOU we are established some of the colleges and Hyderabad and uh, spatial analysis also we are telling we want to predict the prevalence of uh, prevalent of outbreaks and uh, with uh, data in the GQGS and FE info software and we are planning to work on the risk factor for the one health program. And this is a further work we'll be taking on the economic burden of the leptospirosis and the impact on production parameter in uh, animals and KAP studies. So these are the facilities available, sir. Actually, I want to have the few, what are the lacunae and uh, uh, what are the future line of work for the leptospirosis? I will share some of the slides. So, Okay. Yeah, slide is visible, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I was discuss. Uh, this is the area that is uh, endemic and uh, non-endemic uh, states. So far, we have studied and uh, report outbreak available both in human and uh, as well as uh, animal. So when you are wherever is experts are available, the leptospira is there. So you cannot assume that they are the non-endemic, generally non-endemic zone because the study was not conducted. Now we have taken the study for Assam, it is there. So that's why I want to convey here and change in the trend of predominant common and zero are also prevalent in the region. So the starting from mini, mano and Sinopteris and Sermani and intermediate zero are. These are the concern for now. Most of the zero are uh, positive only for some sample only positive for the intermediate strain more than three percent so that will be the cause of concern that will be come to the conclusion after studying the over a period of time two three years so that will be identifying the prevalent zero war so the panel of the zero war to be used in the my microscopic agglutination test has to be changed that is the these are the endemic area now this is possible because wherever animal is there leptospira will be heavy because the animals are carrier and the rodents are reservoirs so this is the major challenges uh, we are facing in animal leptospirosis. I want to put up to the expert panel. There is a threat for new pathogenic zero war in adopting the carrier animal. Everyone knows the type of animal involved in the uh, pathogenesis. Rodent, as I told you, all the pathogenic intermediate species are prevalent in the rodent. Even one drop of urine containing the 
around 10 millions, uh, 100 millions cell leptospira. Similarly, 100 millions uh, leptospira in a cattle urine per day it is secreting. So these are the this much uh, the organism is load is there in the environment, including the chronic infected animals like uh, dog and cerevar uh, pomona in case of uh, pig. So the major challenge is the diagnosis of this screening of this animal as morning uh, Dr. Bhujabharwa sir told us animal screening is the major important and we are unable to diagnose the reproductive uh, problem associated animal. So current diagnostic and zero monitoring are not adequate to diagnose the carrier animal infection. So even that vaccination available vaccine is not able to prevent the chronic infection because it will be unable to mount a adequate immune response, whatever the vaccine available for the dog. Even there is the quality control issue. Even a vaccinated animal, we have checked that. Uh, because the, even uh, vaccine zero or uh, response also, it is not there in the vaccinated animal. These are big question for the vaccine uh, in a dog as well as the in uh, bovine. Among the bovine, there is a only few zero was they are using. That is may not be useful for the our endemic region. So what are the major prevalent zero war has to be used in the vaccine to be determined by the our local regional study. So that also again, uh, cross productive zero war also the challenging one. So to avoid this, that latest that uh, molecular approach has been helping into identifying the leptospira biofilm matrix protein that can be expressed only during the colonization in the uh, kidney. Medically, especially those who are uh, having adverse condition that uh, by, by leptospira they want to make to establish that uh, pathogenicities. So they will produce the protein. Some of the that can be identified only through the genomics and proteomics and transcriptomics studies. So that will be helpful mm -hmm. to identify the biofilm form a specific factors that is very identify or marker. It could be identified during the chronic infection stage or acute infection stage in case of the human will be helpful. Once this identified, it can be used for this protein, either development of the diagnosis or vaccine. That is the, this platform has very well taken that research. So the final product should be the diagnosis and vaccine. This uh, will be getting a lot of the protein, which one used for, for the specific diagnostics, because that was not available for both human as well as animal, ex except in the laboratory study. So these are a lot of uh, uh, research gap in detection, surveillance, response to leptospirosis under the control program. That is the major one. So better understanding of this factor affect both the distribution of the zero war in the pathogen in the environment as well as potential transmission of disease by using the one health approach only it can be have the better solution. So this knowledge will be critical information on the decision maker to able to target the risky area on priority basis as well as for subsequently prevent the prophylaxis measures and the treatment and control of animal vaccination development it will be useful that is the major uh, factor we'll have so to break the ch transmission ch chain of this uh, leptospira uh, we have to identify the protein as i discussed using this technology what we are proposed the project uh, nia was wonderfully handling that program and uh, we have to come up with uh, some important protein that is need of the hour for prevention and control of the disease, especially the, I was told the carrier status of the protein instead of the general one. Our preliminary study we have conducted with the in vitro study. We are able to uh, identify the some of the novel markers uh, for case identification disease through in vitro model of the biofilm. So we have done RNA sequencing and proteomic study and uh, we have submitted some of the uh, uh, gene analysis portion then we have found out that some for 20 to 40 genes are maybe directly involved in the biofilm formation still our uh, sample size is less we are further working in collaboration with nia i already discussed with the uh, paisal for regarding this protein and uh, we want to have as uh, one of the protein also we are expressing and working that so unless we are including that important biofilm or uh, carrier uh, formation protein in the analysis to identify the specific uh, marker that will help you to diagnosis of the disease both in human and animal in early diagnosis that is the must the, that's why i want to discuss this one with here and further to develop the highly potential vaccine also very important with the most specific species specific prevalent zero work. or along with that interacting identifying the biomarker as here marker vaccine or maybe in the subunit vaccine we can do 
so that this vaccine can be used as a regular immunization in the farm animal in the endemic region to prevent the kidney colonization otherwise it is very difficult to eliminate the pathogen from the animal so wherever the animal is there leptospira also will be there again uh, this because the animal carrier animal will can excrete the leptospira around 36 month that is 3 years it will excrete if suppose the farm is affected with one animal it is endemic for whole uh, three years so it is very difficult to eliminate this uh, carrier animal from the farm so this i, I want to tell you use, uh, these are the areas we can have think over for the future research and epidemiology aspect transmission dynamic of leptospira from animal to human being and intervention strategy coordination and multi-dimensional data triangulation method between the multiple stakeholder from human health animal health and environment counterpart is very important for early detection and initiate the uh, treatment drive for the human case. So again, identification of the rodent packet and devising the environmental friendly method for control of the same is very much useful. This will help to the reduction of the cases in uh, leptospheres in human and animal. Uh, diagnosis I already discussed, so it is uh, no, same way I have put it into different model, including the detection of the leptospera in the environmental sample, especially in soil and uh, uh, water water bodies so cost effective and multiple zero war vaccine along with uh, biomarker molecules it will be the need of the hour that is why i want to tell you uh, thank you so much sir this is how i want to convey to the meeting uh, for the expert group thank you dr balabhan sir how many are there now yeah any doubts sir i will clarify sir i think uh, uh, we will have discussion later yeah, I think uh, this Bala Murugan, he has uh, projected the important things, yeah. whatever he covered. So more or less, uh, I also collected those information on this. Because for epidemiology, this one health approach, whatever we initiated, I think that uh, if any further project they will uh, provide, definitely that will help because our approach will be to the field and we'll go to collect sample in that type of mixed farming setting or different population. So in the single go, we can collect the same samples and we can uh, depict the picture. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Yeah. Dr. Balmurda. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, coastal region, you have mentioned already in the NDV. But uh, my own experience I can share with you. I work in the So that is also a penetrate. And um, after the. Sir, it's uh, not audible, sir. Uh, properly not audible, sir. Voice is breaking, sir. Hello. Now, now you can. Yeah, 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 sir. Please, sir. Yeah. So I will share some of my own experience from working with this uh, uh I was working in um, Chhattisgarh for some time. Yes. So sir. that is also a very time. So uh, after the transplanting season, particularly in very season, you will find every village will have some uh, fifty to hundred. Cases of the EU particularly. So uh, we collected some four, four or five villages uh, in the region. We found around 15 percent cases, particularly those in the EU, there of lesser uh, culture. So I think this is your paper that's come from the EU. From typhus and uh, lesser parasites, this is our whole region that has come. Uh, secondly, to refer to the Yes, we can start with a paper for the town, but you can get to the town. And you have different centers in India. And they also work on water, particularly with the so energy in the river. And they have their own methods of how to access the rural burden or rural population in particular area. So I also worked with them for one year. So they categorize uh, different categories of these uh, rural implementation. If there are around up to 0 to 25, that is good expectation. 25 to 50 per hectare, I have per hectare, it is a moderate expectation. If the live borrowers are more than 50 per hectare, 
with a very active uh, and they get to control. And they have given very, very small uh, simple methods for control of women to be taken. If class was an adequate way to perform it, adequate way. We also help them uh, work uh, in that area. So I think those techniques are already available, but many people may not be aware. And uh, they work at particularly the Nausa and Walsa Tajja Nishis of Abhira on this aspect. Control of women is very good. They found significant number of these cases in human activity with the control of these women in the Kadikram in the population. So uh, I think uh, this is very good work. Uh, we have incredible um, data in animals and human. But how to break the uh, translation chain? That is the first and all. Because there are the women. Yeah, that, that's why, sir, actually. Uh, integrated surveillance that is in one health approach is very very important in this uh, control of the disease because it is environmental also playing role and survival of the bacteria there is a difference we have observed sir in the what is the western part of the country that is arabian sea fort and compared to the bay of bengal so you can see that the difference of the outbreak uh, in human the very virulence outbreak especially in the arabian uh, Part that is Arabian Sea part, especially Kerala, Mumbai, and uh, Gujarat, they're very severe. That pulmonary form of the infection. If you are seeing in the West Bengal portion, so you can see the mild form of the disease in Orissa and uh, West Bengal as well as uh, Andhra Pradesh and the uh, Tamil Nadu. So there is an integrated very much importance. And moreover, recent uh, control measure taken in the Gujarat, whatever sample we are getting. The positivity percentage is coming down, sir. That one I want to tell you in uh, animal forum. Yeah. Animal, uh, animal, it is coming down. Very, very few animals are positive. Even dog we screened recently, last uh, two months before, out of 100 sample, only five sample is positive. So it is good indicate. Even cattle sample titer was very less, less than 50 uh, mat titer. So it is indicating the drastic down because of the control of, uh, they are they're taking, I think, Gujarat, uh, uh, State is taking very good control measures for the leptospira in the uh, NCDC uh, control prevention and control program leptospiras in human being. So they are doing very perfectly because this is indicating the animals population also less simultaneously because the otherwise there may be changing the climate changes on the survival of the bacteria also may be the issue that we have to look into that. Uh, now some of the research papers you can see what is happening in the solid breathing oil. Sir, your voice is not uh, clear, sir. Uh, Hello. Hello. Yeah. Now you can listen to me. Still is not better, sir, but uh, not uh, exact. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Bala, Bala Murugan, uh, the one point about the soil. Because yeah, yeah. What, what I uh, what I see in the literature, so yeah. alkalinity will favor the pathogenic uh, leptospira to survive for long period. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That uh, soil uh, pH, I think, will also be another determining factor. Yeah, now that's why I'm telling, sir. Gujarat, now that percentage positivity is uh, coming down. I, I don't know that exactly due to what reason they are taking the uh, rodent control program or action. Uh, they are taking some of the program uh, in the human being. Yeah, and uh, simultaneously, uh, survival of the bacteria also the issue. Even animal population is coming down. Positivity is uh, very less. I can tell you the experience. Uh, what they do actually? There is community participation in control of rodents in the paddy fields, particularly yeah, yeah, yeah. the field. So naturally, the rodent population, if you are controlling in the paddy field, it is coming down animals as well as human also. Yeah. Because this uh, person who was expert in that actually is a research in Hyderabad, Dr. M. K. Mohdav. So he is in Hyderabad only. So he is the consultant for them. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So actually, they are taking care in the paddy field. And um, that's a very cheap technology, 20 rupees per acre, nothing. But the whole village has to do, whole the community participation is required. To control this one. If they do on family basis, what is the I will tell you about that. So that is why secondly, our recent data they say the soil rich in iron and low in uh, I think magnesium, they favor the uh the early proliferation of uh, the 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 the, the, the soil, new literature. So I think uh, this also may be the region actually, particularly in coastal region, lateritic soil rich in iron contain other things. That may also be adding to this. Now, I think future we have to see these things also. Let us yeah, see. Yeah, sir. So that if that is working, best way, one of the way of controlling the rodent, that will be better, sir. Especially yeah. in the so, farm and uh, paddy field, if you are controlling normally, that incidence will be coming down. Yeah, in paddy field, you know what they do? 
they take around 960 grams of broken rice okay and they add 20 gram of uh, 20 ml of oil idi oil oil whatever you use at home and 20 gram of bromodil uh, and they have to make i will i don't have for i need to do the photograph because you had done this campaigning so this is actually 80 to 90% rodents will be killed with this within no time within the four days so they are doing uh, village level so bromodil is hardly 20 rupees broken rice you can have your own home and oil is at 20 ml just so uh, i think i will share the some photograph with us so this one is good okay sure sir yes so we have wonderfully you can 90% now farmer girls particularly those areas you know they do have to do they propagate this um, uh, hybrid rice when the hybrid rice is at uh, pillar stage lot of rodents attack will be there on them they will eat up everything so to control that they are using this uh, technology and community basis because if one farmer does it will not help whole of the village has to do otherwise other rodents will uh, migrate there actually so this is the rodent biology you have to study little actually but the, uh, gujarat same uh, same pattern they are following now that's why you see gujarat is nausari walsad every uh, village community basis they do actually and for one season once one control is enough so they have uh, expect the, the same treatment because of this actually the leptospira cases in humans and animals are practically come not only this now i will share one review with big rather more than 200 people parasitic other things can be given by rodent so all will be controlled in a single uh, go actually so this is actually required in an all india basis but i feel actually so already technology is there but how the community uh, accepts it that depends thank you sir thank you sir i have two points yes please yeah Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Not uh, properly, sir. Hello. Yeah, yeah. But. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. yeah hello yeah now fine sir yeah yeah sir so actually i have i have few points uh, based on your uh, such a long experience in the field also uh, both barbar sir and you that uh, like what is your conclusion about the because we have many zero work brilliant you know worldwide so if we talk about indian subcontinent so in indian subcontinent whatever studies have been done till now mainly epidemiological study so which zero work is highly prevalent in animal and which in human yeah that is a region wise it is variation is there sir but uh, most of the prominent uh, zero war will be identified four five, five to six zero war it is prominent in every region that we have the list in our published uh, report okay. so we will be finding over a period of time we studied uh, so it, it is very with uh, region and emerging uh, zero war also coming but uh, most prominent one we can select six to seven that can be incorporated in the uh, diagnostic laboratory in human side Yeah, for microscopic agglutination test that zero work can be used for the we are using for the development of the diagnostics or any intervention strategy yeah because it is very difficult to target all zero work so we yeah, yeah it is very difficult if we know the, the targets then we can just uh, develop the any, any kind of uh, vaccine or diagnostic on that target only like i understand that hard zero is very much prevalent in cattle mm-hmm. so we can focus on hard zero for cattle Suppose the vaccine or diagnosis. That is the established zero war, sir. Actually, that is the maintenance zero war. Apart from that, infective zero war will be there. Every host in animal, there mm-hmm. is one maintenance zero war, some maintenance zero wars, and some additional infective zero war. So that will get the opportunity to cause the infection in the animal. So we have to target both the maintenance zero war as well as the infective zero war in the particular regions. What you are targeting for each species. Suppose example. in uh, dog its maintenance zero war is canicola ectoro mm-hmm. other zero war will be the infective zero war in case of uh, cattle it is maintenance zero war is arzo arzo bovis yes, so yes. pomona will be the infective zero war in case of uh, pig it is uh, tarasovai and uh, pomona is the maintenance zero war so we have to see the region to cover that all the animals so that is why the approach otherwise it will be huge uh, money will be spending for the vaccine development so yes, yes. you have to decide that such a way that that can one vaccine or multiple zero war vaccine 
can be used for uh, cattle in that particular area or the farm animal we can have the farm wise instead of the village we can go to the farm nowadays in maharashtra and all they are using the leptospira vaccine for the cattle to mm -hmm. frequently every year they will use it to avoid the colonization of the bacteria in the uh, uh, kidney as well as in the reproductive tract that is the two reason uh, that colonization is i was telling that one is uh, kidney colonization another is uh, in a reproductive problem so the uh, persistence bacteria will be there in the region so that uh, causing abortion so by simple identification the case and uh, subsequent uh, treatment for the death we can eliminate the infection in the farm so the problem is only the screening of the animal we don't have the proper diagnostic kit we have to go for pcr which is expensive for detection that is from the urine sample otherwise we have to go for the reproductive vaginal swab or peripheral swab to identify the animal if one animal is affected that itself be enough to spread the whole farm that is the major problem here so one animal can be carrier for more than 36 month that is the big question in that it will secrete the uh, bacteria through the urine so that's why i was telling that biofilm formation of the molecular identification factor that is what you are identified more be more than uh, 30 40 gene that you have to find out uh, apart from the normal cell that biofilm formation marker is very very much important for some of the two three paper recently published and that will give the clue for uh, identification of the biomarker and subsequently detection for uh, uh, diagnosis purpose so that is a must we are uh, targeting that way one that's why i was discuss with you also later we are having experiment in vitro model we have completed in the biofilm and we are uh, now meta analysis it is going on we have find out around 42 20 to 40 genes are involved in the biofilm formation so similarly the in vitro in vivo study in the mice model we are conducting through dst project so we'll come to know what is exactly in that uh, gene so that uh, we'll be collaborating and we'll work for the we'll identify the each okay balamurgan balamurgan one question about this uh, pcr uh, the zena specific uh, which should be the most uh, reliable pcr or is there any multiplex pcr no actually for a diagnosis purpose lipel 32 gene based pcr is the pathogenic pcr sir that is okay. confirmed by who as well as the oe is recommended recommend it for ah, hello uh, i'm chennai sir bol raha hu madam control us about and uh, gene gene specific pcr to rule out the non pathogenic pcr sir that is a 16 years rna based one yes yes okay thank you you can use the both sir even a lig b also there loa 22 genes are there but generally lipel 32 along with the 16s rna is, if you yeah. doing a multiplex pcr in this you can rule out whether pathogenic or non pathogenic non pathogenic okay so, thank you now intermediate specific pcr also they are developing sir but it is in the process way uh, not confirmed one article they are come with uh, identify the intermediate species uh, pathogen leptospira but still it is uh, not uh, working properly they are tested with uh, less number of sample in that laboratory only not the field evaluation they are not at. from the brazil paper so balanu sir yeah one, one more thing i want to ask you the current vaccine which we are having is on reference strain so why is why we didn't uh, have our own clinical assessment till now no, no actually clinical isolate from uh, cattle and uh, animal dog is somewhat easy but uh, cattle is very difficult because uh, it is carrier state we have to collect from the urine not from the blood one thing and vaginal swab because they are using mostly other antibiotics for different type of therapy so it is very difficult to isolate the isolate from the rodent is very very easy that we are targeting actually we have isolated uh, four five uh, rodent uh, four five isolate from the rodent from mumbai during 2015 uh, due to our lab shifting uh, we are unable to maintain the culture that way so we'll be again starting from our karnataka and maharashtra and some of the orissa state we are planning and it will be very easy within a month we can isolate from the um, rodent so, so we are not even having a whole genome sequence of our uh, indian isolate no because we don't have any isolate in isolate i think most of the work done by who center from andaman they have completed more than i think 30 to 40 isolate that is reference time 
along with their isolate they are characterized i think uh, my one of the phd student is there with me post doc student he worked there in andaman along with dr bijacharya sir they have the data for that i don't know exactly it's not published not the public domain yeah, maybe maybe not published but they have completed actually okay you can i think if bijacharya sir there you can explain i think so okay so okay so the the acid left over from uh, this uh, animal source is calendric growth Even yeah, yeah, we'll be trying to do. If you are isolating, uh, definitely we'll give to you because uh, we have collaborator. But uh, I'm uh, starting this uh, monsoon. I'm waiting actually. It will be from the road and capture only is the big issue. I have spoken to the pest control uh, department. Yeah. So yeah. with the help of them, we'll be able to do that one. They will be capture the road and and bring to the lab and we'll be isolating. Yeah. It's very tough first job. Mm -hmm. because uh, to tell the sample negative i have to subculture several time and i have to wait for 45 days to get, tell the negative itself to tell one sample to be negative in isolation i have to wait for 45 days dr balamurugan uh, i'm pankaj sir yes sir okay sir okay sir theek hai sir yes theek hai so uh, i have one uh, like when you are talking about uh, chronic infection and you said that uh, almost uh, more than one month uh, in the urine bacteria is set so uh, not urine sir not urine okay. urine bacteria will stay less than 6 months 6 hours okay so where so in chronic infection where we find the bacteria in in kidney in the kidney and reproductive organs but it's not set in urine urine it will set frequently okay so the my question is when uh, bacteria is sitting in the kidney Uh, there is no pathology pathology there no Do no that? pathology sir because it is escape mutants like our virus it will avoid the immune evasion because that is the biofilm uh, biomarker is playing a role there they are okay. helping the attaching to the kidney kidney okay. tissues so we can't use any kidney specific biomarker for uh, yeah that we have to work that's why i was informed to bisel we have to work on the biofilm uh, markers because uh, those were the bacteria which is uh, undergoing the adverse condition they will be forming the biofilm so either is the environmental factor or the host factor normally normally uh, kidney infection is very rare in uh, livestock so if we find uh, some kind of like if we are screen them for several uh, animals for uh, expression of like kidney specific uh, proteins when the, mm -hmm. there is inflammation so maybe that has that kind of work should also be taken because if we don't know that whether which kind of inflammatory reactions it's creating over there so yeah yeah sir actually the leptospira heat shock protein also creating that when there is the adverse condition in the host also the are outside also environment that protein also we may be exp experienced during the biofilm formation okay. and certain the cytokines what about the cytokines identified il8 or like that pro inflammatory cytokines can also be one indicators mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. cytokines and cytokines are So some uh, they have done its uh, study, but uh, exact uh, they are not concluding that play a major role. That's why we have to start do that genomics or uh, bio metabolism. All these proteomics, uh, omics uh, technology, we have to apply and find out the best uh, out of that uh, five six protein. Then only we can uh, uh, screening the animal. As morning I told screening animal itself, we have problem. so even in human case there is uh, no test available for uh, organ transplantation kidney in situ patient only we can screen uh, that kidney transfer some of the case i read in uh, some rarely report so after transfer transplantation that patient got the leptospira so that uh, they are one part of that organ implantation that uh, screening also is a must when human kidney transplantation is going on because a human is a dead end host so they may not have the infection for more than 6 uh, weeks uh, the, because he can secrete the bacteria 6 weeks only not like uh, uh, what is that uh, cattle it is a 36 month hello good afternoon as you said that uh, heat shock proteins no the limitation with this hsp is and as dr barman was saying about various cytokines the limitation with this markers are 
that it's not because of one particular pathogen there is if there is a little bit physiological imbalance due to any pathogen or due to any kind of stress these uh, uh, markers are uh, there so yeah madam I, actually a leptospira specific heat shock protein also there madam that is pathogen is specific heat shock that uh, grow yale grow yale and all they are reported reports are there some we are we have to find out such a type of protein uh, for future use that is so why i was uh, reported, it is reported in which species rat model or livestock no no lecture? in leptospira itself madam leptospira specific heat shock protein that is grow yale uh, that is uh, and uh, when it is leptospira also there uh, when it grow is grow yale grow yale and uh, hsp 16 eh? host factor the host factor is different madam i what i was talking is the oh, leptospira okay. specific heat shock protein okay because in adverse reaction the pathogen itself it is to survive in the system so that protein if you are able to identify and implement in the system so that we can easily diagnose the chronic status of the animal So animal is the major. If you want to break the leptospira in human, you have to first to break in the animal. The animal no, is the source sir, for the leptospira. No, if you are saying that there are identified and reported ones, then I think Dr. Faisal is uh, not idea to look. At. Yeah, one or two only, madam. That's why we have to work for the our more uh, proteins because sure, people. Sure. Sure. so in vivo model we may get some of the protein that after analysis we may get that rat model what uh, dr paisal was done was the hamster model that is acute case model acute case model that pathogen will be there in only in the blood stream for more than 10 days so once even cattle are passing that stage so chronic stage only the whatever you are targeting the protein that may not be available in the blood system so only the reproductive system you have to go or Uh, urinary system you have to go so that is why the genetical leptospira group of organism they are calling us now leptospira also different uh, form of the disease so uh, what is your opinion on uh, this developing antigen based diagnostic or early diagnostic like if we diagnose leptospira when it is in blood uh, does it breach the organ yeah that is a must sir actually a patient uh, if you are saying that uh, patient will come to for diagnosis when they will come generally after the 10 days you can imagine if at the first the patient having the fever for 2 days he will ignore or he or she will ignore after 2 days he will go to the physician again physician will give just one uh, one course of normal antibiotics so again 5 uh, days gone totally 7 days gone then they will recommend to test so the, after testing it is a 10th day so maximum you can able to detect the blood uh, diagnostics so that is diagnostic useful of the blood is uh, using the serum or blood sample whatever blood profile including the plasma so you have with, within 10 to 12 days only time so most of the patient coming to the hospital they are crossing already 10 so any test which is useful through urine along with the blood support it will be very easy diagnosis so that's why who also recommending Uh, plasma pcr with igm elisa so that is the clear cut definition for the leptospira so we can target even urine so that it will substantiate our uh, diagnosis we won't miss the sample patient so uh, that is a neglected because we are missing the pa patient and unnecessarily patient are dying due to undiagnosed cases yeah so we don't want to miss so if anything related to chronic stage that is after 10 days of the marker during the infection stage it will be much better than the second or third day of marker expressing marker that's why my opinion was because two days marker if you are able to detect no use for the patient because patient not coming to the hospital that day so 7 to 12 days any protein expressing in the in vivo model that will be the best my marker to my knowledge that will be you have to target or you have to go for the later that is 15th day marker to diagnose and get the treatment but the problem is acute pulmonary case it will be the 7th day 8th day so we have to target for 7 to 12 days marker anything in uh, in vitro model or in vivo model that will be the best protein to be used for the diagnosis as well as for the vaccine also 
again vaccine if you want to use so the biofilm farming protein that we can, you can if your immunity developed against that we may not allow the pathogen to colonize in the uh, kidney so that we can avoid it so you mean the current vaccine is still vaccine so that is zero risk tested so what is your no, it is yeah, zero war is not a matter sir here all zero war became same because of the opportunity that's why i told you maintenance zero war and infective zero war when there is getting the opportunity that zero war will play i think there is no space a difference of treatment for different zero war it is one treatment one antibiotic one but problem is what we have to identify is there so which protein we are the immunity against that protein we are not allow the bacteria to colonize in the kidney that is the best method of vaccine or if you are using the conventional vaccine every year we have to vaccinate to maintain the immunity should not allow the bacteria to colonize it. so if you are leaving one or two years gap so again that bacteria will colonize so this is the problem in animal also in Maharashtra, some form they are doing regular vaccination, some form they are not doing. So if one animal, two animal appeared in the form, it will be the carrier for uh, other animals. That is the major problem in animals. Human diagnosis is must 7 to 12 days marker, which we are targeting. That will be the best uh, diagnostic marker. As morning, uh, the, Dr. Dinagar sir also told there is a shift of IgM and IgG. It is complicated because IgM ELISA is positive, but patient is normal. Because this may be IgM cross reactive with other uh, dengue or Kraft uh, typers or whatever, maybe other uh, Salmonella, other things. But IgG is overtaking that because sometimes IgM is persist for years together in the patient. We cannot assume that that IgM is uh, presently present infection. So, Dilka sir is there. I think is there. I have one question which I, I think I upon clarification that maybe you are talking about switch from IgM to IgG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, uh, you know, let's see, Lepton's virus has an LPS, which is very dominant antigen. So, yeah. uh, the immune response generated is raised against LPS molecule, and LPS is a P dependent antigen. So, yeah. the response re remains IgM, and there is no yeah. clustering for IgG. So that's why we focus response uh, against protein molecules, which are also there. But yeah, yeah. Protein is molecules are better. LPS, we yeah. cannot go. It is again, it will create cross reactive to the non pathogenic zero war and the intermediate zero war antibodies. Yes, yes, yes. So, sir, because sir, I that, is your... the, that is the inherent problem of current diagnostic IgM kits, sir, because they are using the generally that uh, patak that is a non pathogenic antigen only, they are coating in the plate. Yes, yes, yes. That is why the matching of Matt and uh, Elisa is uh, what, uh, what Dr. Janakaraj morning sold was around 60%. It is not at all matching. I tried a lot of the sample. It is less than that also, some of the cases. So a lot of natural antibody, what we see against the LPS, not the protein, that's what you mean. Yeah, that way the, we are, uh, that is some of, that's why we are combination of the protein, it may help. That's yeah. why I told you. The combination of the protein and the protein or molecular biomarker which is expressing during the 7th to 12th day of infection that is we have to target to get the best diagnostics and similarly for the chronic stage that is to screening the animal we have to go for the chronic stage after 10 days of infection which biomarker exp expressing during the colonization especially in the kidney or the reproductive organ this will be the best choice I think Vijay Charya sir is there. Yeah, yeah, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Sorry, I joined late. Yes, sir. Uh, we were waiting for your uh, comments, especially that IgM ICG discussion which is going on. Ma'am, could you repeat? I couldn't hear. Hello, hello, sir. Yes, sir, sir. Yeah, tell, tell. Uh, sir, actually, I want to explain the of this that uh, whatever the antibody is generated after infection or immunization, that is uh, predominantly IgM. So that IgM is due to the, because LPS is the major antigen and the response against protein is masked by antigen. 
so there is no class switching and igg response is very late what is your view on that why you are getting only igm see what we have seen as uh, dr balamurgan also was uh, suggesting see this uh, when you in fact uh, when you get infected by any uh, any organism any pathogen you will have a igm increase maybe 3 to 7 days and then you will have a igg increase okay but uh, what happens uh, this is an endemic population so already uh, most of us would have got exposed and there would have been igg uh, pre present in the in our sera so even if you get uh, reinfected and there is a small uh, uh, igm increase that will totally get masked by the igg so if you see the conventional igm uh, elisa they will use a anti igm monoclonal to capture the igm from the sera first so that they will remove the any igg from the sera and then they will add the antigen to check whether the captured igm is against your antigen okay in that case during the elisa process itself you are removing the competing igg from the sera and then you are checking whether it is against your antigen but in a indirect elisa format you got to add the antigen add the sera and you got to add anti igm uh, hrp for example then your igg is already there in the sera you are not removing that so this kind of indirect elisa format for igm detection may work only when a naive individual gets infected and the igm is at the peak early in the infection and there is no background igg okay but in our population we see already lot of igg present so even if you get infected igm will have a very short uh, peak and it will immediately uh, switch over to igg so it's very difficult to use an igm elisa in an endemic population so sir you believe that there is a memory formation after uh, uh, first infection or first exposure some memory is there that's why we get Yeah, yeah, memory will be there. Of course, some people claim that the switch doesn't happen and so on. But uh, uh, I mean, my point is not about the pathogenesis, but in a diagnostic scenario, okay, okay. using an IgM ELISA for an endemic population may not may not be a very ideal method. And most of these kids, remember, Pan Bio is probably Australian kid, which might have been. Uh, you know tested in the popul australian population which is not endemic okay so directly applying it here you know may not be a, a good method and so, we should so, you know, uh, just one thing uh, like uh, as you said in the beginning igm so do we know that what exactly is the window of this igm or that is not known to us because we we say later it is being uh, overlapped by igg so do we know tentative window of igm if that is also known to us perhaps that can also help us so yeah, that is known ma'am that is known generally it takes about 3 days to increase and it takes about 7 to 10 days to come down that's a normal peak of igm oh, okay so maybe so, the 72 hour strategy uh, if that is the goal for this particular indirect elisa uh, that should be uh, good is that what you are recommending no we are recommending you should go for igg elisa itself in a endemic population you should not uh, try for an igm elisa because uh, especially in a indirect format because your chances of detecting igm will be very very low in a endemic oh. population oh okay. oh thank you you should go for igg uh, <laughs> the igg will persist for 4 uh, years madam 4 years for the infected patient that also reports are there igg yeah, i Pardon, madam. Not getting audible. Am I audible now, sir? Yeah, yeah. Tell me, madam. So my question is that uh, right now we were discussing about the lactose para diagnostic. 
So, uh, yes. is it true also in case of JE diagnostic as well that we should get IgG? No, JE, I am not an uh, expert here. Uh, you can ask Dr. Dinakaraj or someone. Dinaka, sir. Dinaka, sir. Uh, yeah, what, yeah what, what was the query? I'm not that well versed with JE also. Yeah, anyway. Okay. So, my question was that uh, can we use the similar kind of approach for diagnosis of JE using the IgG antibodies in the field of IgM? No, no, no. No, that that no that that is not the right way. JE is a, a virus, and uh, you know generally they correlate better with uh, protection. In bacteria, I think uh, people have tried lots of protein antigens as a diagnostic marker, and most of that has failed. Uh, even in uh, brucella, uh, brucella, they have used all uh, sorts of antigens. And nothing uh, could replace LPS. So JE is totally a different uh, category. We can detect IgM there because that's that's uh, the endemicity is very low there compared to lepto. So you, I mean, we are not suggesting you should go for IgG ELISA in uh, JE. That may not be a good approach. Sir, I can. I think uh, Dr. Imani is there. She can answer that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes ma'am. A very good afternoon to all of you. Uh, ma'am, like uh, uh, as per my experience, like if we want, if you want to do a zero surveillance study, then for zero surveillance study, you can go for IgG ELISA because uh, the case is same in uh, JE virus also. Like IgM, we have done the kind of antibody kinetic study in swine population. And we saw like IgM stay there till 15th day and after that it starts falling. So, but if we are going to detect the active case, like either in humans or in swine, like we want to see like the infection is recent or not. And you want to do the diagnosis. For diagnosis, you must go for detection of IgM. But when you are doing surveillance, then obviously IgG is best because IgM will stay there for a period of 11 days, 12 days or maximum 15 days. And beyond that, it will fall. So for surveillance, IgG is best, but when we are going for diagnosis, then WHO also recommends IgM capture ELISA for humans. And in pigs also, we are using IgM ELISA to detect the recent infection. Thank you. Okay. Dr. Imani? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Is there a plan to commercialize this? Uh, yes, sir. Sir, so we have uh, we have already uh, we uh, have already uh, transferred our kit to every in a way, and uh, two three companies they are interested. The situation is going on, and uh, it's uh, we are planning to commercialize it. Sir. Okay, thank you. Okay. Sir. Uh, but for Dr. Imani, under the one project, what I heard the other day. I think they are, they are going to use her advice, right? Dr. Uh, ma'am, your voice is not clear, ma'am. It's it's not no, audible. Actually, the first screening is with some commercial kit and then uh, validation with this also. So validation will get done uh, in this project. Uh, okay, no, ma'am, as it is validated, this I have repeated several times in the meeting. It is validated. She has uh, got it done from three institutes and one universities. No, ma'am, it is like our IgG kit is validated across 10 labs uh, from different institutes of India, including NIV Pune. And IgM kit is also validated across five institutes, different institutes of India, ma'am, including Nisad Gopal, DFMD, uh, IDDL. Uh, yeah, that's what I recalled. You getting a lot of validation reports and handing over the closed envelope and all that. So it's fine. Yeah, 
Yes, ma'am. Right, ma'am. Actually, ma before Dr. Pankaj, before the kit was released by the Honorable Minister, she got it validated, and then the kit was released. Dr. Imani, may correct if this is not the version. Yes, yes, ma'am. You are right, ma'am. And I have I have explained this several times in the meetings of One Health. Uh, but I don't know. Like still, they say we must use commercial. So just now, Doctor Pankaj is also in one health, so he said that it is to be validated. That's why I said because it's anyway. So it's no, validated. No, no. It's clear to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Yeah, as I say, as I suggested uh, in the last uh, part of the talk, I think uh, we should establish a consortium of labs which are involved in leptospira diagnosis, and there should be some uh, quality control on the strains that are being used. Because, for example, the in our lab, Lepto lab, we bought the strains about 10-12 uh, years back. And we have been subculturing these strains for uh, you know all these years. And we have been using it in our uh, mat. So there is no quality control on the strains. As well as uh, you know, we don't do a 16S uh, RRNA uh, on the, to check the purity of the strains. So these are very critical. Otherwise, this could be one of the major reasons for the discrepancies in the results among yeah. the labs. So it is very essential. Somebody, you know, should uh, build the cat and create a consortia and have a SOP and uh, follow same procedure of MAT across the labs. And also, as I said, uh, you know, some quality control on the reference strains that are being used in the lab. And also send some samples, coded samples, across the labs in the consortia and, uh, you know, see whether the results are similar. I think uh, for COVID, recently I heard that uh, uh, this was done with when only few samples. I, I heard it was only five samples of which, uh, you know, three were negative and two were positive and one was uh, weekly positive. It was sent to a consortium of labs and uh, they had a quality check and they said more than 80% of the labs gave similar results. So this, this kind of exercise needs to be done for Leptospira because of the wide variability in the results given by the kids. See, I told you the variability in the assays. And uh, remember, we are not only talking of diagnostic kits here. These results are going to be sent on the individuals. And the treatment is going to be dependent on these results. And whatever the you know, the aftermath of the treatment, the prognosis are also going to depend on the uh, treatment, which in turn depends on the results. So if the results are so variable, just imagine the kind of uh, problem for the clinician and the patient. So I think it's very, very important that some diagnostic concordance for leptospira especially has to be done. This is my uh, one of the recommendations which should go uh, in this expert group. Uh, no, I think Dr. Vinata even chairman will agree. In the last part or the table which you showed at the concern which you have shown is, is uh, very correct. But uh, so are you planning to start that consortia? Really? Uh, we, we are not. I think, uh, you know, probably NAIB can initiate or uh, NAIB can initiate. He will definitely be part of that. Uh, no, I think the uh, ICR Institute at uh, Andaman could initiate. Uh, no, I think you, you have a good point. One can do it, but as Dr. Barbudu said, under the one hand, uh, I think in the phase one, Dr. Barbudu, we cannot take up this activity because phase one, we are very clear. Let phase one be there for the serial surveillance model as we are uh, doing in one hand. However, when we go for the phase two of one hand, Either we can think there or else, uh, I mean, I will really look towards uh, Dr. Faisal. Why not you? Why not you? And I think the suggestion is uh, very much required. 
very much required and you got a very strong networking uh, now not only through one and he has his own uh, networking with the group so, session is entirely essential at national all finance officers were directed to analyze who will get all finance officers source of audit the run dead committee the that's why you're very right you're very right dr padre but that's why i'm saying that even one health bc their concern is not only lepto so some lepto's for a laboratory from the institute should really drop in right now and shake hand with the one and it's our own program so why not ignite and why not ignite and take uh, why do we have this brainstorming so if we get if not four at least two leads also I, i will be very happy very very happy when so many people are getting a lot of time so morning also i re, i i was i absorbed his last slide and that's what he says uh, so professor dinakar i think that is a very well uh, suggestion very well taken by us and maybe uh, we will be uh, kind of in touch with you with uh, sir vijay chari and of course dr bala murgan on board uh, for that thank you so much thank you in uh, today's talk we heard several biomarkers that has been used for development of leptospira diagnosis so uh, the issue is uh, do we have this biomar whatever has been discussed and presented are these biomarkers good enough for uh, diagnosis of leptospira or we need a new kind of biomarkers that has to be identified for its diagnosis and if uh, the biomarkers are there then uh, where is the problem why we are not in a position to develop a better diagnostic sir what should be the uh, like uh, act like a pinpointed focused approach for developing a best kind of diagnosis that you you think of sir we require sir. a new biomarkers actually because uh, transcriptomes uh, rna sequence analysis for uh, in vitro study you are not audible we can't hear you sir is audible now Yes, am sir. I audible? Yeah. Yes. Sir, actually, new biomarkers is required. Actually, when we are studied uh, with the in vitro model, transcriptome is RNA sequence study. There is a normal cell and a biofilm cells. There is lot of difference of protein. That's why I was told, yeah, twenty to forty genes are uh, associated with the biofilm formation. So some of the gene which is a promising biomarker we have to take into consideration along with the earlier identified marker and the that protein which has to be expressed during 7 to 12 days of infection that will be the best biomarker for developing the diagnostic in case of the human and in case of the animal or carrier and that is we have to go for those protein expressing during the colonization form that is especially the biofilm formation cell there we have to identify the biomarker for animal diagnosis so that is why the my request in that that why what i was understand so as a dr nagraj okay, also the earlier whatever protein individually expressed it is not giving the promising result which is equal to the gold standard test mat that is the purpose so just to su supplement uh, dr bala madhavan if i may supplements sir yes sir yes sir yeah like, like i said uh, this quest for the ideal biomarker will keep continuing but then you know in such a complex organism especially with uh, different stages of the disease like you will have an uh, acute phase and then the you know chronic phase where it gets lodged in the organs and so on it's very difficult to find a single biomarker that will be there in all the uh, different stages of the disease that's what we also see in parasite which has different uh, stages in life cycle or chronic disease like tb or brucella is very difficult to boil down to 
one or two biomarkers that can pick all stages of the disease. So while the quest will go on, the, the diagnosis is going to be a problem. And the other point I want to, would like to highlight here is, see, we use different candidates, but we don't have a kind of benchmark uh, sensitivity and specificity that we are trying to you know, achieve. For example, COVID, you see the recent ICMR guideline says you should have 98% sensitivity and 100% specificity. So any kid that is not achieving this 100% uh, specificity and 98% sensitivity is rejected. See, we had one of our incubators uh, sending a kid and it was 97.8 and he, they rejected it. We also argued that 97.8 will uh, round off to 98, but they said no, because that also indicates some uh, portion of sample that was uh, tested uh, wrongly. So we, when we are choosing these antigen or diagnostic candidates, we have to keep in mind what are the benchmark that we are planning to achieve. Say everybody uses a candidate and then says my sensitivity is 85%, 92%. But that is not what is needed in a clinical diagnostic platform. Because 92% means 8 out of 100 samples, you're going to give wrong diagnosis. You extrapolate it to 1,000 and 10,000 samples, it becomes 800 samples. So this is not the benchmark for diagnosis. So this point has to again to be borne in mind by all the you know, research people that what is the benchmark you're trying to achieve. And if you are antigen, candidate does not achieve that, you just, uh, you know, discard and go ahead. That is why they, we still have whole, uh, whole, uh, you know, whole organism based kits only, mostly in the market. We don't see many, uh, you know, recombinant protein based assays in the market. Sir, then so, thank you. In this case, sir, do you uh, do you agree that uh, we should start uh, identifying biomarkers using any one strain, and then uh, validate those biomarkers their presence in uh, several other strains? Only yeah, yeah, possible can... approach, you know. You, you can only do a, a bioinformatics approach and find out whether it is present in all the strains, and then uh, prove it uh, in the wet labs. That's the only, but I, as I said, you know, the diagnostic uh, marker should have a benchmark. What is the benchmark and what stages of infection I'm going to detect? Okay, sir. Thank you. Hello. Hello, Vijay Jai, sir. No, he's online. Okay, just you can. Hello, sir. Uh, hello, good, good afternoon for all. Are you able to hear? Yes, sir, we are able to hear you. Okay, fine. Because it's a remote, uh, you know, sometimes the signal is very poor. So that's why I worried. So are you able to? Yeah, I can start my presentation. Yes, yes, sir. You can start, sir. Are you able to see, please? Yes, sir. Okay, anyhow, so thank you very much for inviting me. It's a great uh, opportunity for me to share what are our experience. So I can talk very briefly so that you know that there's just a few words about my institute. This is a regional medical research center, ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Research, WHO collaborating center for the uh, leptospirosis, as well as nodal lab for Southeast Asian countries. Then in this regard that I would like to uh, extend my support. Anybody want any help in leptospirosis diagnosis, the reference and research, we are happy to share our experience. Then just few words about the global disease burden. You know, I think global disease burden, there is a large, a large disease leptospirosis epidemiology reference group formed by the you know, WHO Director General, and he nominated about six people all over the world. And we are, we are proud to say, RMRC ICMR is also 
one of the member for the estimation of the global disease burden. So this project is about 2008, it initiated and 2000 and it is a ended, but not ended means now ended officially. Then we continued up to 2013 to estimate the global disease burden, the several meetings held in India as well as in, uh, in Geneva. So ultimately we estimated the global disease burden. I would like to sell a lot, lot of leptospirologists are gathered there. Then out of the papers of hundred papers in India, so only one paper qualified for the disease burden estimation because there is no specific guidelines not followed by so many publications, which is not suitable for the, you know, what can call disease burden estimation. That's why I request all the leptospirologists while calculating that now age specific mortality is very, very important. That should be needed and nobody calculated the age specific mortality. That's why so many papers are not included in the estimation of the disease burden. Then, now you know that daily always some slight problem. Are you able to see that slide, please? Hello? Hello? As you can see. Uh, okay. So the daily in the form of the years of life lost and years of life lost means the death, that years of that means years of life with disability. That means that you can see years of the life lost due to mortality and years of health, life lost due to disability. So of course, this is, a, this is the equation being used and the global disease burden due to leptospirosis in 2012 estimated 2.9 million dailies are lost per annum. So it is a, it's a very huge figure, you know, 2.9 million is not a small figure at all. Then if you go back to the 2000 or 2011 or 2000, not sorry, 2005 or 2006, the global disease burden is very, very less, but it's increased about 2.9, it is an alarming precaution. Then coming to the disease burden in India, then at the same time that this global disease burden is over, we also initiated the estimation of the disease burden in India some, some different states. Before that, I would like to express what is the common syndromes reported in India, all over the India. So just you can see acute onset of headache and body ache is a common, commonly reported, I think more than that the, you know, that mortality is less than or zero to less than 1%. Abdominal syndrome, the particularly associated with the jaundice and any hemorrhages, that mortality risk goes to 28.6. This is our experience based on the experience of different parts of the country. The severe pulmonary hemorrhagic syndrome, case fatality ratio is about 46, and hepatorenal syndrome associated with pulmonary hemorrhages about 50, and acute respiratory distress syndrome, we don't have any data about case fatality ratio. The gastrointestinal bleeding from hematemesis, that means massive hematemesis, a death occurs within 24 hours. The case fatality ratio is about 86%. Diarrhea dysentery associated with hypotension. We also don't have any mortality. And meningitis or meningoencephalitis, we have not studied much. And myocarditis. These are the common syndromes reported in India. Sorry, because I'm wearing the mask due to you know, some suffocation. Then coming to the, the dailies from different parts of the country, the Tamil Nadu. I can summarize and do later on. Karnataka, Himachal Pradesh. In this one, I think I'm not able to see. Himachal Pradesh. And I'm sorry that some slight problem. I'm not able to see. Then Andaman Nicobar Islands. And overall, you can see the disease burden, Tamil Nadu. 19.91 dailies per annum, Karnataka 12.16, Himachal Pradesh least 0 0.2, and Maharashtra 739.80, and Gujarat, Gujarat about, I think some figures are not correct, I think something wrong, and Kerala 969.95, then 96.9, sorry that one, 
then Andaman Nicobar Islands 85.15 values per ton. So now, now why that one this much? You know that daily is reported that leptospirosis are endemic for almost all the states. The recent studies conducted in 1918, 1919, 1920, and 21 it indicates almost all states in in, in on, sorry in India are endemic except few states. Why is all the states are increasing the you know that you are not called called the incidence. And as well as mortality, what is the reason for this uh, upset? It's very tough job to define. But of course, our hypothesis, or not a hypothesis, is also true. It's true, the geographic genomics. You know, the ecological agents undergo genetic changes, acquire virulence on evolutionary time scale. That means the lower animals, a proportion of the people, at particular point of time, it may not infect that animal population. But it will survive in the in the soil several years and years. Then it will go under genetic variation. Then it will become it will able to infect the animal, but it will not infect the human being. After repeated circles or circulation or culture or whatever may be, go on propagation of the organisms in the animals. Then only it is able to infect the human being. This is this is the geographic genomic is well known. This is the reason. Other reasons for the incidence increasing of the incidence or prevalence in India, mainly not only India, in globally, this is due to global warming and changing what can call atmospheric. Global warming is the main thing. There was unwanted, sorry, unexpected rains and all the things also maybe causes for the incidence. Then in addition to this one, here I can explain how that one know the microbe non-pathogen. Everland, particularly, then it will become after repeated, uh, repeated amplification itself. It will cause the microbe virulent to the animal. Then again, again, so, several repetition. Then only the microbe virulent to the human being. This is the advantage we can use. That's why one health is very, very important and crucial because everybody, health sector and animal sector or veterinary or agriculture sector, they won't. Work together. Not only in India, anywhere if you guys go, I found there is no collaboration. There are no coordination between the these sectors. This is very very important now. Unless you collaborate or or coordinate with each other, the health sector, veterinary medicine, and agriculture is not possible to to make any genetic diseases under the control. So it is very clearly known in the case of leptospirosis. You know, the leptospira biplexa is normally known as non-pathogenic. For intermediates, so many groups are defined well. Then interagents, of course, found to be pathogenic. Then we can see here, particularly the leptospira biplexa has the three genomes. One is the circular genome one, other one is circular genome two, other one the plasmid total. 3.9 MB in the genomic size, but in the case of intermediate, the size is increased. But there is, I think, in addition to that one, because you know, there are also two genomes, but plasmid is nil. But you also please remember, integrated plasmid is found almost all intermediate size. Then, in coming to the pathogenic, purely there are the two genomes only, that means genome one and genome two, but plasmid is nil. But Very, very recent studies, after isolation of more than 100 or 120 strains in, in a particular part of the country or different parts of the country, we have clearly identified there is a plasmid also found in pathogenic strains. Also, this is a very interesting finding. But so far, we have not published that to be needs to be published. Then you can see the several strains what we got. From the patient, you know the center is maintaining about more than 280 strains, and we have isolates about more than 120 or 130 per year. Maybe lot of isolates we got, but we are not able to maintain. Maintenance cost is very very costly. That's why that we did that whole genomic sequencing, and we found it. Then even you know the leptospirosis family, we have leptospira, leptonema, and Turner Turnerella. 
But leptospira, of course, we know the pathogenic and non pathogenic. Lepto, leptonema always non pathogenic in nature, but the study shows that that leptonema isolated from the animal population, particularly febrile sheep, that is found to be leptonema. That means the trend you can see the graph, I think, not able to see completely. You see, this cluster is very, very small, pathogenic, and this all the clusters from here to here is also intermediate, and this is a non pathogenic. Non pathogenic clusters also, so one or two strains shows the pathogenicity already infected the animal population. After some time, it may infect the human beings also, but we are not sure. So, if you see that genotypes are worldwide, you can see it's very highly diverse. So, that's why, why what is the problem of the geographic genomics? Genetic changes, you know very well about the definition. Genetic changes accumulate in the genome as a reporter of gene acquisition on gene loss on the evolutionary time scale. What it means, these changes contribute towards the flexibility of the gene, the gene content, gene order, gene expression, and gene regulation. This is very, very the crucial role it will play when the genome is changed. That's why it is able to infect a wide range of animals as well as human beings. But for many human pathogens, this phenomena is common. But how to control? Since this, all the things is complicated, it's very difficult to control, very difficult to eradicate, but what is the alternative? But the method should be only the one health vision. We see, we can at least some, have the, some control. Because I forgotten to say here, earlier the zero war concept is very, very strong, it's very well defined and very difficult to characterize in a particular small lab. Why? Because it needs more than 380 zero wars, all in a pure culture. At the same time, you need 380 anti serum. Then only we can able to do the cross agglutination absorption test. It's a very tough job, but even though we have the 380 same, but not all the zero wars, but we are doing earlier, but now we are, we are not doing at all. But you can see what is the main thing. We can, we can hope possible way in the collaboration with the health sector and veterinary sector, veterinary sector and agriculture, particularly health sector, what we can do the beautiful things at primary health center level. You can see here the clinical signs and symptoms for organ injury is very, very less for minor and no mortality reported in the primary health center. But you can go to the referral hospital all these, particularly jaundice, hemophysis, or that means vomiting, so many things are increased enormously within a one week. That's why here, so what is the decision and what is the, what the solution for the clinician or epidemiologist, whatever it may be, is nothing but the early diagnosis and treatment. You know, early diagnosis is not possible at all at primary health center level because they don't have the diagnostic facility but not necessarily diagnose the case, strictly speaking. But in Andaman Nicobar Islands, any clinicians, experienced clinicians, after seeing the patient, he can come to know that particularly the probably the case of leptospirosis, they are treating immediately. That's why that early diagnosis, particularly clinical diagnosis and initiation of the specific therapy, specific antibiotic therapy needs to be initiated immediately on the same day. Even one day delays of the therapy, it may lead to the mortality. That's why the same day, that means the patient usually refers to the patient, the particularly two days or three days duration. At the time, the concentration of the organism not gone to the particularly different organ, it may be in the blood. Suppose if you go to the antibiotic, it may reduce and it may reduce the complication. That's the main thing. That's why early diagnosis and treatment is the, one of the best control methods not only in India, all over the world. It is already accepted. Then you see the complexity, why that leptospira is, you know, it's not able to eradicate, it's not able to control. Because you can see there's a three domains, the common domain, you have to manage environmental domain, you have to manage the animal domain. It's a very complex domains. At the same time, 
inter environmental interface is also very complex animal environment human animal and animal environment this is a very complex ecology so leptospirosis ecology very complex that's why you have to work at different different sectors is very not easy but it's possible if you combine together with coordination between the all the sectors so now another important drawback it's not a recently or long long ago they find out leptospiral biofilms when we started the study about 10 years back then we we found how do the leptospira will form but i am very grateful to the one of the my student dr vinod now is working at i think nivedi i think all the best of him because he is the first man he demonstrated and he experimentally proved how the leptospira biofilms will be formed then you can see within the 10 minutes if you add the co that is we add that leptospira to azospirillum species within 10 minutes that one bacteria already joined here then within the half an hour so many clumps then if you see it in a one day it is a big clump that means what is the, this is the leptospiral biofilm is rapid it will form within a day that, that is the, all the complications are i can explain in a slide you can see the electron microscopy biofilms then what are the problems of the leptospiral biofilms the leptospiral biofilms are observed in sewage canals on soil on surface water on the paddy field that's why it the leptospiral formation of the biofilm is revealed that one urban leptospirosis earlier some people they question why that animals are not there in well developed cities but still leptospirosis are coming is nothing but the reason is the sewage canals soil everywhere leptospiral biofilms are there in the adverse conditions when the conditions may be favor that is wet condition then leptospira come out from the biofilm and cause the disease the other problem is the leptospira biofilms are more the frequently seen in various surfaces such as the walls and sewage canals the biofilms are resistant to the antibiotic the main problem but here andaman nicobar island we found the pulmonary type of hemoptysis the leptospirus biofilms may be we have not proved so far our assumption is all the so many so many patients not all the patients even giving the antibiotic therapy but we could able to isolate the leptospira from the several cases that clearly indicates there is a the pathogenesis particularly leptospira biofilms are involved once the leptospira biofilms are involved the patient may be resistant to the antibiotic this is the main target the probably continuous supply of the infection dose may be in the in the case of environmental that may be particularly that that this means leptospira is always in the soil always in the paddy field always in the sewage canal is a continuous source of the infection that's why all together that means all the seasons we may get the leptospira but of course the rainy season is very more because a lot of rains and a lot of sewage canals also flooded and that you no know, the soil is wet that's why that the main reason the outbreaks will come so control of leptospira is ultimately suppose if you join together is not a easy to join together particularly veterinary sector agriculture and the health health science is very tough job but there is no way for us to control the leptospirosis intersectoral coordination i am saluting that veterinary person one person about more than 70 years ago he wrote that book that is animals he written very clearly veterinary public health is very very crucial very very important it is needs to be implemented in the health system but nobody bothers that's why you now the first pandemic of influenza came in the worldwide pandemic it is not could not be prevented because it is well known by the veterinarians not at the health professional it is well known because about 10 years it take the first epidemic on uh, animal population occurred before 10 years then after the 10 years then only after the pandemic the pandemic among the human being that, that very clearly indicates the geographic genomics plays very very important role if the regular scrutiny regular that watch the regular studies on environment animal if you do continuously the continuous process 
then it's very easy to uh, control the formal leptospirosis. So these are different vaccines I defined, not necessarily explained very clearly. So finally, I would like to say one word, one health approach is a not easy. Advocacy, anybody can give the advocacy, but you will follow very, very important. The policy change, you can change the policy change, but we will follow the policy change. Another important one is the behavioral change. Unless you change the behavioral change, the one health approach may not be possible. That means the holistic approach, one man show is not will work at all. Holistic approach of all the sector, all the people involved in the community, that is very, very important to control the leptospirosis. With these few words, thank you very much. I am a little bit delayed and uh, no, I could not be able to speak properly due to my mouth. So sorry for that one. Thank you very much. Uh, giving the overview of this uh, leptospira uh, switch is the genomics and the different approaches for control. Of course, uh, USCJ, WHO collaborating center also. And I know so many years you have been working in this area. I have seen several papers from your, your group also. So now the topic is open for discussion. Anybody wants to have any views or uh, uh, suggestions, please. Hello. Uh, uh, please. So, uh, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Sandeep Uswa. Sir, you said... Wait, like... Just one minute, one minute. Can you wait? I can take some water. Yeah, sure. Please. Please. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, uh, as you soon like uh, you you have sequenced like a uh, lot of like um, serovers, like a uh, whole genome sequencing. So how huh. many serovers you considered like uh, and how many them are like a uh, local? How many serovers is uh, that means sequencing, correct? Yes. So about fourteen serovers. Forty serovers and uh, mostly from India. All are India. All are Indian. Okay, sir. All are India, but not a not a common source. It may be animal source as well as human source. Uh, okay, sir. So, uh, sir, did you generate any pan genome? Because uh, this is quite good number, and uh, because uh, uh, these different serovers behave differently. Uh, like, uh, for example, in uh, animals, there are different serovers, and for humans, there are different serovers. So, is there any? Did you done any kind of like a pan genomics? Okay, okay, fine, fine. Very good question. Interesting. Because we are maintaining about 380 serovars of the six batches. So that means now so, so many serovars what we have procured from the different parts of the world and as well as isolates from the different parts of the world and isolate from the Andaman, Nicobar Islands and India. Okay, sir. So, uh, so uh, on genomic level, do you find like a large difference of like a, uh, this? Uh, uh, animal and uh, human serovers because they have like a little bit different uh, specificity for some reason. So, can you see it on genome level? Exactly. But what, what, what is your answer is yourself you answered well. Because you know, the genetic changes may not be in the observable manner. The genetic changes are very, very, very small. That's why, you know, the zero was at the time when that about five years, years back, they, they almost all, all the countries were top to the CAD. And at the time itself, 300, and you know, that means that somebody uh, have some big centers, they have the 350. That means up to 24 or 25, 28 zero group. But now, if you, if you do, then maybe there an enormous number of zero was maybe there. We could not able to identify. That's why they told unknown isolates. Like that, that is very, very crucial. But Serology is entirely different and the genetic makeup is entirely different. You know, genetic makeup is only based on the genome, but serological, serological based characterization and serological makeup is mainly patrolling the surface antigen of the carbohydrate, you know, LPS. That's why that is, genetic change may not be there that much, but a small change in the surface, it leads to different zero one. This is the concept of the zero one. You know, the concept of the serovars is nothing but the two strains are said to be different serovars 
after absorption with adequate amount of heterologous antigen, more than 10% homologous titers regularly maintained in any one of the antisera. This is a very the critical definition. Despite a very small change in the surface, it will lead to the one different zero watts. Zero watts. If you go for the genetic, what you told correctly, we won't found much genetic deviation between the one zero watt to other one, or one species to other species also. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, hello, sir. Uh, please. Sir, this is Faisal. Oh, yeah, please, please. Uh, sir, actually, uh, yeah, sir, very, very, very nice talk. And, sir, uh, uh, you know that uh, uh, whatever vaccine we have in India, uh -huh. they are based on the reference strain. Uh -huh. So, like, I think the vaccine, if we develop on clinical isolate, you know, that would be much better than the reference strain. So that is that is what you told is correct. But now, how many isolates of the local uh, local content we can use as the vaccine? Hmm? Oh, one minute, can you excuse me? One minute. Okay, sir. fine, fine. This is all sort already. Uh, that, that's why you know the vaccine. What I what you feel now that you know well because that vaccines are not at all successful so far. So yes. we don't know what type of vaccine needs to be developed. That, that, that's why you have to think about if you use that local zero hour also, it may not act today, tomorrow it may not act. Because I told you it is a genetic makeup or changes in the surface also continuous process for the leptospite. That's yes, why you have to find out a solution. Is there any possible that I don't know really? Because the change of the antigenic makeup is very regular. Or maybe it may be continuous process, not like a genetic makeup. Genetic makeup may not change much. This is my opinion. But you have to consult with uh, any other other uh, experts available. If you want any isolates from our side, we are happy to share you. Yes, thank you, thank you so much, sir. Sir, actually, uh, thing is that uh, the current vaccine we are having is a killed vaccine. So uh -huh. I don't know what is your view if we change the strategy instead of killed vaccine, which gives a short term immunity, if we try uh -huh. to develop a live attenuated vaccine. Where we knock out the gene, you know, like virulent gene leptospira, and uh, you know make it a mutant, attenuated mutant. So what would we like? People have uh, successfully made it. I think from US, uh, our group is there. They have made a uh, this uh, leptospira flagellin. They have mutated it, mutated it so leptospira cannot, uh, I mean, loss in mortality. So in that way, become attenuated. So that kind of vaccine, kind of vaccine has been developed. It has not been commercialized yet. But uh, if if in India, if we develop a vaccine from our own isolate. Using same strategy, then we will have our own vaccine, which may be better than the existing vaccine, whatever we are having. And there's no vaccine for human. We what are exactly, vaccine for exactly. I agree. That's why it is that vaccine production or vaccine development in leptospirosis may not be permanent process. It's a regular process, it's a continuous process. You can collect maybe the animal isolates or human isolates or environmental isolates, anyway, anyway, which is in utilizing your body develop. That means you inactivated also we can use nowadays a lot of uh, lot of techniques are available not necessarily to heat inactivation. AJ heat inactivation is a lot of problem. Now I think somebody told me the huge level they inactivate the leptospira. So that you can develop and you can see even if you protect one one year is also great value. Then yes, you can yes, see it because it is, you know it's not a very uh, suppose you are not spending about the uh, recombinant and all thing your whole cell whole cell based. Uh, it's not a very difficult task. Time to time, you can develop, which is working well, you can use. That is also great help for the human beings as well as animals. Yeah, thank you, sir. sir. Sir, one more thing I think you stressed upon that we should uh, have an early diagnostic so, huh. to, you know, for treatment. So what is your view to, uh, you know, on developing early diagnostics? Since we don't have any early diagnostic, so what is your uh, appro I mean, uh, view on this thing? So that is, what, that is also a very, very complicated question you asked me. So then once upon a time, that a lot of seven or eight diagnostic rapid tests available in India about, about uh, 2000, uh, 2009 or 2008, I cannot, I cannot remember. So all we check about seven or eight companies. So none of the rapid test is not suitable for the investigation at early diagnosis of leptospirosis at peripheral level. This is the main problem. But nowadays, I think no, some, some diagnostic techniques may might have come. But, but, but it does not mean that we should, somebody should not work on the you know, 
rapid test. You can you can try for the rapid test even about dry dot technique. You know, it's a very simple technique. It's working well, very well. But they transfer the technology to the other people in the Netherlands people. But that country almost all not producing at all. You you can just try the continuous process, the rapid test. If you develop, it will help for the, all the common man. Not necessary to go to the hospital and all these some so many people. If you go also, they could not able to do at all. So that's why. Right. Suppose if they have the kit at handy, it's a more uh, more it's a, it's a, it's a, it is grateful for the uh, the people because I don't know in mainland India, but in Andaman now I think that the fear gone earlier leptospirosis to diagnose they will suffer more because they are thinking about Andaman fever means once Andaman fever comes means the death is you no know, that is very very common but that that concept is gone why because now. At that time, I am telling about 10 years or when I assumed the charge here as a direct about 15 years back, the mortality rate is about 24, case fatality ratio of 24 to 28. But now it came less than one case fatality ratio is nothing but, you know, that early diagnosis and treatment and awareness among the people and co coordination between the health and animal sector. So that means that is that you, you can do any diagnostic test with the rapid or any action which will work even a small period of time also is a gold standard and it will work well for the community. Thank you, sir. So, sir, I need your support for uh, if I need some clinical isolates for developing any vaccines or diagnostics. Uh, what, 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 you, what you want, please? I mean, clinical the clinical isolates, whatever you have. Oh, got, clinical uh, isolates. Okay, clinical uh, isolates, yeah. you can tell me. Then yes, I, that means I, I can take some time, and uh, uh, because now you know nowadays uh, all the people are uh, the COVID related, uh, yes, uh, that they are working on COVID. Then uh, the clinical isolates, even including that names of zero were also we can do it. No problem. Thank you very much, sir. So the forty yes. isolates which you sequenced, are you planning to publish the data? Excuse me. The forty sequenced, uh, you know, you the forty. Ah, uh, that, that's why that now that can you help somebody means it would be helpful for us because now. Now we did the sequencing, we analyzed some at the primary level, but uh, tertiary level analysis we were not able to do. Some good people are there, means then uh, we also give the other few. Yeah, thank but you very much. Sir. And sir, so as you discussed of, that... Lot of isolates we, we sequenced, uh, but uh, that means that the, I think that we prepared the article, but uh, it needs somewhat more correction. Hmm? So, sir, as you, yeah, one more last thing, sir, as you discussed, we are very, very happy. I, in front of my director, I want to say this thing that you, you propose that if an IB an can also be made as a WHO reference laboratory. Excuse me? WHO reference laboratory for leptospira. Oh, the, the WHO leptospira reference, they will give the world the region, but not nowadays that, you know, you know about earlier about the six or seven or WHO centers are there all over the world, but no. Hmm? Now they reduce it to the three. So one one is about India. At least we are maintaining. Sir, Even is there, more, sir, is there any animal center for WHO reference like animals from animal? Ah, uh, that's why right. that you can try that the animal that means that that we that may be uh, what can call uh, you know that um, you have uh, AEO, correct? No, AEO. Oh yes, sir. Oh yes. Oh sorry, AEO, correct? No. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, AEO. Yes, Yeah. We don't, we don't fall under WHO, Dr. Faisal. Uh, you have to have OIE referral. Oh, yes, yes. Exactly. OIE, that means the other one is there in agriculture. Actually, uh, OIE is like WHO for veterinary science. Okay. Exactly. exactly. You are supposed to have that. Yes. Professor Vijayachari, uh, good evening from NIAB. I am uh. very happy that through this uh, uh, workshop brainstorming, I came to know about your work, about your lab, uh, laboratory. Uh, Dr. Faisal used to discuss a lot about you, your lab, and uh, I could hear from uh, Professor Manjula and also uh, now. Thank you very much for uh, joining us. Thank you. And we look forward for, uh, uh, for further collaborative efforts as we have been doing. Thank you very much. Exactly, exactly. Anybody can have that means develop that one for the World Health Organization or maybe I think now I think four organizations there in the world wide world worldwide. So if you get that recognition is very I'm very happy I'm glad and uh, suppose if you go that other center for the WHO in India may, may be not possible I think at that moment. So but 
you can try for other uh, double uh, but not who old uh, old uh, world wide organizations or what what uh, you uh, madam suggested so somebody want to do me that i would be great so at the same time this is a great opportunity for me to uh, meet i think uh, even balamargan also yes. there yeah yeah yes so, sir I, you know, now that means now right. you are working well so that, that's why i very glad because i supposed to come to the hyderabad to see the physically but i i lost that my opportunity due to some reason so anybody interested to come for today always always welcome then we will bear the tada <laughs> nothing to worry so anybody want to come then who with very happy to receive you yeah. thank you very sir, much sir please plan to come to hyderabad some other time uh, certainly i can do certainly i can do thank you sir. so madam what oh, my what madam what you she told me madam you can just give your reference madam for me then for my reference yes sir no, one, one madam now i talk because i could not able to hear clearly so that i need that madam's contact number and name and all the things that easy yes, for yes, me yes sir sure i will yeah yeah yes sir yeah so i'll be doing so yeah yes sir so i will send you i will send you details okay fine fine thank you very much for the organizers and uh, that means the, i think no that i missed that so many things because i had the meeting with my dg same <laughs> are in between so that's why i could not no problem, sir. thank you thank you so much you have given time online it was very very useful for us and it we have been learned lot and really really it was great support from you so i looking forward to meeting you also sir sometime thank you thank, thank you, you thank you very much. much see you sometime okay? thank, yeah, you, thank, you, thank, thank you sir thank you for all thank you for thank all. you sir Thank you. Okay. Ah. Okay. So, now, that's Faisal. Now it is any more presentation? Nothing. Now there, sir. That's all. Okay. Yeah. So, that's uh, all. No, you want to, sir? Any? <laughs> on it okay good afternoon am i audible yes am i audible you are audible sir you are audible okay thank you thank you uh good afternoon respected chairman sir Dr. Parvode, the director of National Center of Meat, uh, respected Madam Tanu Sharma, uh, director of this NIAB, and uh, all friends online and offline, distinguished scientists, 
then uh, friends from here, uh, Dr. Faisal, Dr. Ravi, and uh, other students. So today I would be just giving and uh, uh, some glimpses of research work done at our center. I am uh, Dr. Siraj Khan from ICMR's Northeastern Regional Institute, uh, that is Regional Medical Research Center meant for the eight states of Northeast. So I would be talking on Japanese encephalitis, current status and challenges. So as we are all brain fatigued, so I won't be <laughs> wasting much of time with uh, some things which I presume that we all might be knowing after this whole day's deliberations. So this is the JE uh, Global Burden. This also was presented in one of the slides in the morning. Uh, JE Distribution of India, rather this uh, particular map also was shown. So about half of India's population live in JE endemic regions and about 1,500 to 4,000 JE cases are reported each year. And 23 states, that means almost every state with the exception of Gujarat and Rajasthan, and we can see uh, Mizoram and Sikkim in Northeast and uh, Kashmir. Uh, all other states have either reported um, at least a case for JE. And, uh, among the JE endemic states in India, Assam is the worst affected. Uh, then uh, JE has a perennial occurrence in Assam. We have a single JE season, unlike some South Indian states where it is, uh, they have two JE seasons coinciding with their two monsoons. So JE distribution in Northeast, if we just see the picture of Northeast, JE was first observed in Assam in 1976 with high morbidity and mortality. And there was a team from Calcutta uh, this, uh, Viral Research Institute who did the first investigation and they isolated the virus from a very, uh, till that time, a non-vector hot mosquito that was Mansonia annulifera and that is still the only isolate from that particular mosquito uh, done by this uh, a group of uh, scientists led by Dr. Chakrabarti. So in Northeast India, besides Assam, JE has, all, JE has also been reported from Arunachal Pradesh, uh, Nagaland, plenty of cases from Manipur and uh, Tripura since last four or five years and uh, Meghalaya. So as uh, we have been listening from the morning that uh, Northeast region has two very ideal situations for transmission of JE. One is the very high peak population. Number two, the paddy growth, the paddy plant plantation. There's the staple uh, crop for the Northeast. And along with this uh, paddy, the wading birds also come. The birds belonging to the ardid species. So they are also the um, uh, uh, reservers of the virus. And uh, the pigs are the amplifiers. And uh, mosquito, as this Assam region is situated in the tropical belt, so this is very ideal for uh, mosquito breeding. So there are two or three types of mosquitoes which take part, what we studied. So subsequently, I don't think I have a slide for that, but that is a very interesting thing. So there are some mosquitoes, mosquitoes are very specific in their food habits, okay? And in their breeding pattern also, like everybody knows dengue. Dengue, and we also know that dengue is uh, spread by mosquitoes which bite during the daytime only. Dengue mosquitoes, the Aedes mosquitoes never bite at night, okay? And they breed only in containers, never breed in a drain. So if some municipality is saying that we are cleaning all the drains for a dengue control, that is nonsense, okay? Because they only are container breeders living in a, uh, our uh, uh, kabadiwalas or living in overhead tanks or bamboo stumps or uh, pineapple leaf axes, things like that. Similarly, this Mansonia, uh, uh, the um, uh, vectors of uh, Japanese encephalitis specifically live in paddy fields and in ponds. In ponds, they might be free living or they may be attached to some aquatic plants. So I'll just selectively say what has not been said. So uh, uh, we have a full bouquet. So uh, this aquatic plants, this, what affinity do these mosquitoes have with these aquatic plants? They are not free floating, free living larvae. They have siphons, which they attack in the air spaces of these plants, in the roots, okay? And that is how they breathe. Therefore, 
if we are going for a larval survey, if we just put dippers, you won't get any mosquito immature because they are all stuck to the roots of the plants. So these are the Mansonia mosquitoes. So in Kerala also they have been uh, incriminated. Uh, in uh, Northeast India, in Assam also they have been incriminated. But the most common, most notorious are the Vishnui mosquitoes, which are paddy field breeders. Okay. Then there is, as we say, that uh, the reservoirs of this virus are the birds. So every year, does the do the virus does the do the birds bring in every year a new? Because these are the places where we have a single season of uh, J transmission. So there may be two options. Either this uh, virus must be spreading trans ovarily, okay, from one mosquito who is overwintering in November, December, January, February, and again coming with the transmission in May, okay, or every year the virus is pumped inside de novo through this uh, um, uh, what we call uh, this ardate birds. So it could be, but it has not been studied yet. So we know the transmission cycle, but these transmission cycles have to be studied specifically because this will be again ecology specific, region specific. So in the uh, very early uh, monsoon or uh, just with the first rains, we generally we get in February or March, much, much before the monsoon, we get a mosquito that is Anopheles, uh, oh, sorry, uh, uh, I don't know, I'm forgetting the name. So that mosquito is specifically abiphilic. Okay, that mosquito feeds on birds, and the larva of that mosquito feeds on uh, mosses or aquatic greenery. Okay, so these aquatic greenery they form with the first monsoon. So the larva also very suited for the early rainfall, and the uh, mosquitoes also are ardate birds. So these are the mosquitoes which are responsible for bringing in the virus from the bird cycle to the pig cycle. They are zoophilic, they are aviphilic, right? So this virus has established in such a good way that you can see the last 100 years, it has been very uh, successfully spreading and uh, with, uh, in spite of all our efforts, still maintaining itself. So this transmission cycle also has been studied very nicely with uh, with uh, veterinarians as well as medical people because up to this place it is the same the transmission. Okay. So these are the states in northeast, like Sikkim uh, does not report cases and Mizoram does not report cases. So other uh, six states have been reporting and uh, I can't see from here, but uh, we have written the year in which the first case was reported. Assam obviously is the oldest, then uh, came Manipur, then Mizoram, and the latest uh, edition is Tripura. Hmm. Same thing. Hmm. People are not reporting me, they have to report because the acute encephalitis syndrome, when it comes, it is not a mild fever. The person, 100%, see, it is uh, most of the time, it is asymptomatic, okay? More than 97%, 98% people are asymptomatic. So in an endemic population, if you go for a zero surveillance, you will find uh, maybe 90% people zero positive. But ideally, there will be only one case per village, not more than that. Therefore, uh, the asymptomatic is to, symptomatic ratio is too high. And uh, once a person has symptoms, he will have to be hospitalized because most of the time it is acute encephalitis syndrome. This uh, virus uh, infects the brain. And uh, as uh, somebody was telling in the morning that most of whatever, suppose 20%, now maybe the, with the good uh, 
clinical practices, the cases have case fatality rate has come around to maybe 10 percent. Okay, so only 10 percent uh, patients might be dying. 90 percent do survive. But out of this 90, again, 80 percent have neurological sequelae, which may last from one year to lifelong. So these are the day cases have been regularly reported from districts in the upper Brahmaputra Valley. This is the, these are the districts, Assam, uh, sorry, Dibrugar, Jorhat, Tinsukia, Sivsagar, all these things. And, uh, but does not have, does not have. Huh. Till, till now it has not reported, means we have not got any report. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, 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 that's why Madam is saying not report, not report. Because of the Northeast is very peculiar, Madam, as you must have seen, that all the plains have been taken up by Assam. All the hills have been left for these hill districts. So now what is happening, more and more of the hills, they are cutting down in many places to create uh, paddy fields. And pig is, in any case, everywhere there. Because there was showing me uh, 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 pig farm in Mizoram where we don't have uh, heard of any case till date. 2,500 pigs in one farm. And a single farmer having some 14,000 or 15,000 pigs. Mizoram. So uh, definitely the mosquito factor is missing. Yeah. Now it has shifted. So it, earlier it was mostly in the pediatric population. So I will come for that. Uh, then what happened in 2006, when the pediatric uh, vaccination started, after that, and it was a very systematic vaccination because, and uh, just to take care that uh, none of the uh, children escaped because it was given with the booster dose of DPT and again with measles. So in all the, both the occasions, there are three injectables 16 no 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 in the uh, eight months nine months vaccination and the uh, last one uh, next one is at 14 months something so within the 15 months or within 16 months two uh, occasions are attempted a single dose is enough but just to take care that it, uh, a child does not escape it was made two doses so that even if they get two doses, does not matter, but at least one dose they will get. So from then onwards, it was phase-wise. First, it was started in Dibruga district and Sivsagar district. And at present, almost all the northeastern districts are covered by uh, child immunization. Therefore, that group is very much protected. Maybe a very few cases, one or two we get in that children. Group. But then what happened? This case is, again, don't ask me why, because I also don't know the question. It became more uh, apparent in errors. But ideally, it was thought that these are endemic areas and everybody might have had a natural infection or uh, therefore there should not be any cases because in any case, they were not reporting till that time. Means not reporting again. Uh, uh, I'm saying that they were not coming to hospital or we were not having any uh, cases in the hospital. But after that, it became more pronounced. And therefore, this uh, vaccine we tried in adults. The study was in RMRC Dibrugar only in Sivsagar district. And then we found it safe and uh, effective for the adults. And then it was again uh, allowed for vaccination, the same vaccine, a single dose in campaign mode among all the adults. So now almost every place, every district, where there are quite a few cases, have been covered by adult vaccinals. But again, vaccination coverage is a problem in adults. It is same. It is same, around 10 percent, around 10 percent, because they survive. But in children, the sequelae is severe, severe, S severe sequelae, is severe. Even in adolescents, uh, class nine, class ten students, because uh, many a times we have seen them drop dropping out from school also. Same, same in Assam.
see it is not resistance the, the vectors of this mosquito of this uh, virus they have a flight range it is said of 3 kilometers so 3 kilometers is quite a huge area aerial distance okay they suffer more or suffer less uh. we don't have another but there in assam we do have it more in the tea garden community because tea garden community uh, tea garden community are huge areas where there is a small pocket where the tea garden laborers live okay and again the officers will live in some distance so that segregation is there therefore maybe the 2 km 3 km is much more than that the other population so that may be a reason where you but then they suffer more because more exposure maybe or har jagah wahi hai ki out of the infected maybe um, 3% or 4% or 5% therefore yeah and we don't get more than one case in a village this is my last 25 years experience very rarely because the village is a population of 3000 which is universal i think so very rarely we get two persons from a village in a year in a year zero servants will give you 100% yeah yes we have Yes, yes, we have publication for that. Uh, the showing the link between pig and mosquito and human. Yeah, whole genome we have not studied. Even our our own isolates, we are still fighting for the whole, uh, whole genome because we have done the whole genome and this uh, bioinformatics part is getting done. Huh? Yes, yes, we can. That's what uh, um, uh, this has to be. Uh, chat and discussed and obviously because once these are uh, i am here i am here man and uh, because once these things are done then lots of avenues will open uh, regarding diagnostics regarding vaccine development yeah 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 so these are our uh, jv strains circulating in this region belong to genotype 3 we have not found any uh, isolate of one till date uh, so we have three isolates from human csf and one isolate from mosquito the, the isolates are more closely related to the indian velo strain okay not to the nepal strain as uh, somebody was saying so this is the velo strain 20778 genotype 3 isolating isolate during 1958 in velo so amino acid mutation found in two of these isolates are distinct from other indian strains of genotype 3 so this will be published in the tropical royal society journal so synonymous and non synonymous mutations have been found in the two isolates during 2014 15 when compared to velo strain so these are our isolates uh, 2691 2474 170 3 from human and uh, one from mansonia uniformis mosquito so uh, ideally there would have been four but the first one as i told that was done by uh, the viral research institute from calcutta so regarding intervention uh, they we have always been trying to um, uh, like as there are so much of uh, morbidity and mortality today they so we have been trying for intervention and in this regard we uh, 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 did connect with uh, isro with their northeastern regional northeastern space application center and we with the help of remote sensing and gis we developed an early warning model so the utilization of early warning model for forecasting gear is villages on a yearly basis this used to forecast it still is uh, there it forecast day on a yearly basis 2 to 3 months before the onset of the disease day forecast by this model has been yearly exercised since 2007 having a prediction precision of 70 to 85% during the pre vaccination period now due to vaccination this uh, has lost its uh, utility because in most of the cases ye has come down to nil where vaccination coverage is uh, very good that i mean more than 70% and in areas where vaccine coverage is less 
that is around 20 to 30 percent in those cases there is a reduction of cases but still we are getting chapter encephalitis infection aes reports so this again we tried one intervention in animals also so this we put some plastic low cost nets uh, impregnated with delta methane and uh, this was on a project board so we distributed this nets and ideally uh, madam in our areas also as in other places also the pig styes are not actually any shed it is just a bamboo maybe uh, uh, boundary or a thatch so here they did not have even a thatch it was mostly the veranda of the person uh, of the uh, kacha house or somewhere nearby they would just tie so we made them uh, made a make a shelter that was a condition that we would be distributing them free nets so we distributed them free nets impregnated with delta methane and uh, in the same area we also distributed human bed nets so we found that uh, the zero positivity among among animal pigs as well as human came down 70% but then again these are all not sustainable in our system and then uh, second thing what we did we did a study in assam medical college uh, there is a tertiary hospital this uh, out of the acute encephalitis syndrome we were getting 40% were jee cases and about 24% were scrub typhus and remaining 8 to 10% were leptospira cases so about 70% 70% of them were either je or lepto or scrub so one of my phd students she also saw the effect of antibiotics on japan encephalitis so she found that death was delayed in animal model due to doxycycline so this was somewhat a uh, drug that had some promise for treating je patients also if you delay the death by one day or two day then the clinician has a lot of opportunity to uh, reverse the case so we uh, with our data we presented it to the principal secretary of health and they included doxycycline as a uh, empirical treatment for aes so it is made a law now in june july august september in this four five months whoever comes with aes has a dose of doxycycline and you know what the case fatality came down from 28% to 13% in this medical college we we test all the aes patients for leptospira for a uh, scrub and now we are also testing for a uh, spotted fever rickettsia typhus group rickettsia and scrub typhus and j and dengue of course we get one or two because dengue most of them are symptomatically also separable but still uh, asymptomatic type we do get some ig m positive but these are the three most important among a 70% more than 70% we get uh, we get a couple of herpes simplex also hsv so but these are very rare hmm. worse very well right uh, yeah these are wonder drugs definitely they are wonder drugs hmm. Hmm. And that strategy is working very well in Gorakhpur also. Now, because Gorakhpur, uh, although the JE came down, but AES never came down. And then later on, it was uh, postulated that uh, it could be scrub. And uh, now they found this, uh, it is scrub. So, doxycycline is the drug of choice. Any fever case comes, you just well, doxy, they do. So, at least they don't die. At least they don't die. So it is uh, doxycycline is doing a wonderful role among AES in the uh, northeast. So then uh, we did a piggyback study on safety and immunology of SA 1442. What happened? The health minister declared that he would be giving the vaccine in 2011 in adults. But until that time, this SA 1414 was never tested for adults. So everybody was in a fix. Uh, declaration means the people also wanted to started demanding that it was already uh, promised we need it so we just 
the government allowed okay let it be in one district in a pilot mode and let icmr do a piggyback study for it or against it then we will continue to other districts or we will not so we did a piggyback study and uh, following the implementation of childhood vaccine with live virus so this is the story since the administration had been conducting various research in safety and immunity as well as pre effect in the vaccine as a 14 14 among children and adults at different phases so we found that we selected a village a cohort of 970 adults we enrolled in the study collection of blood samples were made at different time points that is pre vaccination day 0 post vaccination on 28 days 6 months and 12 months this was a very systematically and very tough job that we did the participants were categorized in three groups based on pre vaccination prnt titers we did prnt for all the samples so zero negative we considered less than 10 or equal to 10 titer moderately zero positive we considered those having more than 10 to 90 prnt titer and strongly zero positive we considered those having more than 90 titer these are pre vaccination titers so individuals in this year long study it was found that total of 95.5% study subjects maintained the protective antibody up to 12 months so this study also documented safety and immunogeneity of the vaccine in both zero positive and zero negative population it was found that 9.27% of the population were zero negative that means ideally this would have been the only population requiring vaccination but there is no provision in any vaccination program to go for a baseline test therefore uh, mass vaccination was done but we found that only 9.27% of the population only 90 out of 970 were zero negative and 24.53% were moderately zero positive it had the protective titer of 10 plus prnt and the uh, 66% were strongly zero positive before vaccination only okay so in the zero negative group zero protection was observed in 85.5% this was a vaccine induced out of the 90 77 again developed the but still a small people um, uh, portion they never had the uh, zero protection so these are the people maybe who are suffering every year in spite of vaccination so whereas rest 14.5% did not show zero protection at 28 days post vaccination yes 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 so this study was presented uh, in front of this uh, antagi group on 17 december after which the live attenuated jay vaccine as a 1414 was recommended for use among adults in jay and big areas of india so now in bakura in some portions of bihar in uh, manipur in uh, west uh, gorakhpur in most of the districts of assam this is also given in campaign mode among the adults in the bio e has started now but at this time this sa portal what but from yengdu the chinese the original manufacturer so subsequently the government of assam undertook mass adult vaccination in nine endemic districts in 14 and now every year they have been increasing so studies on effectiveness of this vaccine case control study in adults so we did a match case control study uh, to estimate the efficacy of the single dose of jay vaccine in the adult population to 7 years like how long does it last so we found the vaccine effectiveness decreased from 91% in first year of vaccination to 72% at 6 years post vaccination so now 6 years have gone and now we have got another project to see the results in the next 3 years so maybe uh, still now we are not sure but maybe this uh, this vaccine would require a second dose among adults at 6 or 7 years so this is the impact of jay immunization as we can see uh, impact of uh, um, incidence rate of uh, jay cases among adults dropped from 10.5 per lakh population to 5.7 and still maintaining in 
so it was not coming further down so this led us to look for what could be the possible reasons why it is not coming below that because with the same vaccine nepal says that it eradicated because uh, it has come below one so then we went for this uh, vaccine coverage study uh, the vaccination uh, program among pediatrics was conducted in 6 2006 in the year 9 ir was found to be 3.1 in sitsagar in dibrugarh the follow up drive on jai vaccination among pediatrics was carried out in 10 Uh, that aim to cover the missed out pediatric population therefore lowest incidence rate of 2.8 per 1 lakh population was reported in 2007 uh, 10 and it has come down now further subsequently two doses of j vaccine were introduced the routine immunization which i have already told so vaccine coverage among children and adults so when we studied among children vaccine coverage was found to be 98% for the first dose and 83% for the second dose this is what has led to the fantastic uh, reduction in cases but in the adult population of 20 to 70 years vaccine coverage was found to be nowhere more than 40% therefore this again we presented to the government of assam and now they have again started with a second campaign because they say that the first campaign was a hurried one and so now there is lot of uh, information and uh, knowledge spreading among the people and uh, hopefully this uh, second campaigns cover more population uh, hopefully the cases will come down further so we participated also in a study conducted by icmr new delhi during class 6 and 7 we evaluated the effectiveness of uh, single dose of vaccine among children so the effectiveness of vaccine was found to be higher in assam it was found to be around 87% in assam compared to 66% so there might be some inherent immune differences also so it also needs to be studied why this was there so this was a as somebody said in the morning that we also needed to study about west nile okay so we have two isolates of west nile virus also so just we wanted to see does this j sf14 vaccine cross protect west nile also so in the post j vaccine scenario we also evaluated cross protection immunity by live attenuated jv against circulating jv and west nile isolated icmr dibrugarh so the circulation of jv strains of assam showed similarity of 91.6% in the cprm region and e region with jv vaccine so it was this was a similarity between the vaccine and isolates the protection rates against three jv strains Studied that is P two zero seven eight, J R G C zero C zero seven, and J R G E zero seven were hundred percent. So they gave hundred percent protection to our isolates. Interestingly, the protection rates against archived West Nile strains, one Karnataka strain we studied, and one of the locally circulating West Nile strain, were fifty percent to thirty three percent by this S F one point vaccine, whereas against another two isolates we found that the vaccine did not give any protection so these are the challenges in the diagnosis of je as we all know an accurate diagnosis of flavi virus is important for timely clinical management but all the uh, diagnostics that we have today are flavi cross protective which i think you will agree because it gives positive for dengue also for je Uh, for west nile for uh, uh, zika therefore we do need accurate diagnostics which is lacking at the moment so several diagnostic tests are available for diagnosis flavor but each has their own limitation and pcr again is not the test of choice because the window period for viremia is very short lived by the time the patient comes to the hospital is already gone so the following tests are mandated for laboratory confirmation of je as per the who protocol the presence of jev specific igm antibody in the csf or serum as detected by igm capture elisa this is not confirmatory detection of jev genome in serum plasma blood csf or tissue by reverse transcriptase pcr or 
and equally sensitive and specific nucleic acid amplification test, which is not practically feasible. Isolation of JEB in serum, plasma, blood, CSF, or tissue, or a fourfold rise in PRNT, plaque blood return test, which is not easy and not followed everywhere, and we need paired sera for that. Serological detection using ELISA. So, as I have already said, it is not accurate. So, the limitations are viremia in human is short lived, and the IgM antibodies are detectable after 7 to 10 days of onset of the disease. Due to antigenic similarities, slave virus circulating in the region poses difficulties in diagnosis of the disease causing agent. The present ELISA kits in use throughout the country, mostly we are using the NIV kit in the national programs. This is found to cross react with closely related slave viruses. Situation becomes grimmer when Western Nile cases are misdiagnosed as J because in those areas where you have more than one circulating slave virus, like in Assam or Northeast, we are having dengue, we are having J, we are having West Nile. So the situation is more complicated there. And the worst thing is that when people having J vaccination have AES and they are due to this cross. Uh, positivity when they are diagnosed as JE, they say that JE ka vaccine liya fe JE ho gaya. But most of the time we have seen 80% of them are West Nile. But these diagnostic facilities are not there. Then PRNT, we are the only center who are conducting PRNT in Northeast. Therefore, this also reduces their faith on vaccination. Vaccination leke bhi kya fayda, something like that. Uh, so, moreover, to add to the confusion, the clinical symptoms of both JE and West Nile are indistinguishable. So PRNT, I have already told. Virus isolation, not very simple. There are limitations of virus isolation. PCR, not possible. So challenges in maintaining high JE vaccine coverage. JE is maintaining nature in an exotic cycle involving birds, mosquitoes. Therefore, elimination of JEV from the environment is not possible. Thus, it is recommended that high vaccine coverage is maintained to prevent human cases. The main challenge is convincing the general public regarding the usefulness of the vaccine, because there are lots of taboos also. Because in some of our areas, uh, we have to fight like hell. Somebody would say this is, uh, because vaccination among adults is very rare. So it was said that is something for sterilization, something for, and uh, lots of WhatsApp messages were going on. So whenever we would go to educate them, they would have to, they used to show us this WhatsApp. Ye dekhiye. Isme likha hua hai ke aise aayenge log, wo kahenge hum medical research se aay hain, ye is chich ka vaccination hai. So it was all like what generally we would do. Ab ab to aagayin ab, ab bhagayin maar ke aap loong ko. <laughs> so these taboos, no, this education also is very important. So careful diagnosis and surveillance are needed to monitor JE geographical spread as human migration, land use, climate change do affect muscular distribution. It is important to identify the risk areas and plan vaccination drives accordingly. So these are the challenges. In fact, uh, vector control is not, not possible here because these are not irrigation, these are not planned irrigation rice fields. This was tried once in Tamil Nadu where they uh, released water in the paddy fields and dried it up after 10 days because the mosquito immatures take 12 to 14 days to emerge from uh, egg laying. So before that, they dried the field. But in Northeast India, it's all rain fed. So you can't dry it at your will. Pani hai to hai. So you can't uh, intercept the vector uh, breeding. And therefore, and the insecticide is not an option because most of the places they have been using malathion and many, and 80% of these areas have developed resistant to malathion now. So the last refuge also is lost. And see, most of them are resistant to DDT, resistant to malathion. So we don't have any new insecticides in our armory. 
So we have to take steps towards sensitization of health officials and general public regarding prevention of JE and identification of individuals with missed opportunity for JE vaccine. We have to pursue them and they have to come forward for the vaccination. Immediate admission is required to develop strategies to avoid misdiagnosis of other etiologies. So developing a robust and accurate uh, diagnosis is very important. Clinicians should gather, I would say veterinarians also, hmm, to make a thorough clinical assessment, keeping in mind various etiologies prevalent in the region and the seasonality before prescribing for specific diagnostic laboratory tests. And furthermore, not relying solely on one diagnostic test as a final proof of because it's a lot of people who positive care and you are positive and you are sure that you are not sure. Thank you. Thank you for uh, bearing with me. I don't know. I just tried to make it very fast so that Rahat ka saans le sab. Yeah, so thank you, sir, for excellent presentation and giving the overview of what went to the vaccination and other things. Uh, Dr. Himani, do you have any uh, suggestions or any queries? Himani? Uh, yes, sir. Good evening, sir. sir. Actually, I'm in the hospital. No, sir. It was very right. nice talk and it was really nice. Okay. Sir. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Ba Bala Morgan. Yes, sir. So, uh, Dr. Khan Sahib, do you have any suggestions? No, I don't have any questions, sir. I don't have any questions, sir. I don't have any questions, sir. Thank you. Yes, okay. So, I think, um, uh, yeah, a lot of inputs and a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. 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 Secondly, ma'am, actually, I want to emphasize now. Yeah. Everybody, the speaker, actually, they emphasize the One Health, actually. Now, how important was One Health, actually? So, though now we are late, but nevertheless, we have started with big platform with DBT. I think ICR is also coming up. Now, we are waiting for the EFC approval. It will be around, um, maybe around uh, 20 institutes throughout India. Uh, I came to know that in uh, Department of Animal Husbandry also, they are starting One Health um, Network. Yeah. yeah, 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 and NCDC also they announced, yeah, yeah, ICMR, yeah, now yeah, ICMR one to actually finalize completely, I, I am also in, in the technical committee of that, but not a discussion has not started, but I hope, I think time to come, because we have seen so many approaches, and unless, No, no, no. Ems also there. Ems also there. Human and um, animal also there. Yes. Yeah. No wildlife institute is there. But they are trying now. But it is very difficult to get wildlife institute on board actually. We are also trying actually. But <laughs> very. But anyway. Um, it is there. See. Uh, right. Sir, not audible, sir. I see. Okay, I think that. Uh, okay. Sorry, Dr. Balamur. No, sorry. No, what yeah. I, I was talking about that uh, Wildlife Act, no? Uh, that is very, very 
stringent, very rigid. So they all go a uh, little bit, you know, that's what I was talking to CDFD director. I told you do everything for rice, you do for human, uh, but you do nothing for animals. They do nothing for animals, you know. So uh, it's, it's equally important. And that's the whole point of not getting a portion over there. Or you ask for a sample, we do something with the, we, uh, uh, at, uh, we, we used to do collecting the fecal sample from them. That also, Dr. Pankaj, you have to take a permission via this and that. Because ultimately, when you report, uh, you'll have to write, now. Nah, how did you get a sample? From where did you get a sample? That's very tricky. And that's what they're saying. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And I think all the speakers, they have given excellent their views. I think uh, you can bring out these, some of the suggestions actually in the pop-up, all the recommendations. I think the one pro already is going on. So some of the suggestions also we can go over that consortium and time to come definitely ma'am will uh, want to work actually. So uh, initially I think two, three years back, what laboratory expertise actually just yes, circulated by uh, that IVRI also because we lack uh, one disease particularly now see GE, how many are people they could diagnose or maybe cockjella or maybe script typers diagnosis. That's how they are mapping also the laboratory capacity. Even ICMR has started on this aspect. So I think this consortium, this type of consortium or this type of work definitely help to uh, get the capacities of the laboratory also to know and we can diagnose better. Way. Now, of course, the research will come, uh, diagnostics and vaccines, a lot of many things are required. Let us see now in the future. Thank you very much for giving me opportunity to chair this session and thank all the speakers. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. Thank you so much for coming and sharing session. And it was really, I have noted down all the suggestions given by expert. It is in rough draft. I will make it fair and maybe then communicate to everyone. I think, uh, Dr. Faisal, uh, by the end of the day, I request Dr. Himani to please take rest. Thank you very much for joining us and giving the uh, talk. Yes, please take rest. Uh, yeah, you may log out and take rest. Uh, Dr. Faisal would reach out with minutes and we'll put you in loop. Uh, Kindly, uh, kindly take rest. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for the opportunity. Dr. Bala Murgan, I am extremely thank you, happy. Thank you, Bala Dr. Himani, thank you. And if you have any points, please share with me. Any points you've noted down? Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Yeah, thank yes, you very sir. much. Sir. Thank you. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sir. Dr. Bala Murgan, yes, uh, extremely happy. And uh, we really acknowledge and thank your... Uh, presence and more than presence uh, discussion, important discussion. And I'm sure Dr. Faisal must be having a points. Uh, also a couple of important points, uh, especially flagged by uh, Professor Dinakar Raj for having a consortia. I would really, uh, really look towards Dr. Faisal. Uh, and uh, also Dr. Vijay Achari, uh, I'm personally very happy to know this group uh, uh, Dr. Vijay Achari, Dr. Siraz Khan, Dr. Manjula, and the work. And that's how perhaps, uh, uh, you know, um, you get to know things. And uh, I'm extremely happy that we are we could arrange this workshop. Yes, ma'am. And uh, also, Dr. Ravi sitting. Thank you so much, Dr. Ravi, coming uh, uh, all the way over here and giving that. Because it was, uh, it was your baby, you started it. And as was told in the discuss in the morning, and, uh, you know, uh, we can look forward uh, having much more inputs uh, uh, from your side again. And also, Dr. Barbade, you know, uh, Dr. Uh, Faisal uh, was wise enough to make a little swelling team because earlier it was Dr. Uh, Ravi uh, J for JV, Dr. Faisal for Lepto, though Dr. Ravi was PI and Dr. Pankaj in it. But uh, since uh, Dr. Ravi left, though he did leave, but he did not leave the work, that we sincerely acknowledge uh, Dr. Ravi. And uh, then uh, came a lot of discussion, and Dr. Faisal now has uh, in his group uh, one bioinformatics and one biosensor portion. And uh, surely this should be our uh, strength. Yes, ma'am. Yes, but ma what I would urge is that. Uh, when you have uh, these two colleagues from uh, 
and i ab kindly don't make them uh, jev specific or leptospira specific um, because i already discussed with dr pankaj and uh, i would not uh, let him be only the leptospira or the jev person however you cannot do all the things at a time yes, so we might do in a in a for example if he has re really picked up uh, the by informatic uh, work for the one for one pathogen say leptospira as you were sharing all right let it go on and as she has already some uh, biosensing for uh, another uh, virus uh, for another pathogen the virus uh, japanese encephalitis so let her go on but off late i think we would have everyone on board uh, like dr pankaj is doing uh, as you said the diagnostic you want to develop with his septumbar yeah. approach that's it what we do but uh, you know as gradually we, it will not be six months only i'll put all my efforts uh, pandemic was uh, there you know and two for years. one and a half uh, years to two years we suffered in fact uh, when we discussed uh, since i have to coordinate this project uh, dr barbu they when we discussed dr faisal said this is supposed to be an international workshop so we then discuss we two three times we discuss then we thought if that that time omicron situation was not very good one and a half months back when we decided if not international at least let's break in nice at a national forum Definitely. and um, i don't know i think all might agree i could be, get benefited and so did the program yes ma'am it's a very 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 good i think you are not one day was but very very useful very very useful, useful. Yeah. and uh, it could become useful because uh, all the people who are here we thank them yes, and people who are present throughout uh, online mm. with their uh, very crisp inputs uh, yes, i sir. think it uh, there so now we expect that uh, soon we should have the uh, minutes of this meeting and uh, i think we should not delay sharing the minutes and uh, before we finalize the minutes also we will take uh, towards the project and we discuss when we go to the funding agency that these are the outcomes and in those minutes uh, very strategically you have to put a recommendation uh, through the experts uh, that uh, due to pandemic there was a pause and if we have to uh, otherwise we'll leave the you know uh, the loose end uh, uh, at the we had to if we have to mend the uh, this uh, loop ends then project has to see a light of another one year besides the six months yeah six months no no six months we already have black and white yeah. so after six months one more year and i think one and a half months time should be fair enough for us uh, dr ravi to at least have uh at least couple of diagnostics and uh, a couple of uh, other specific leads uh, if not uh, uh, yeah, yeah. i think uh, iveri uh, team is also she spoke uh, so we could appreciate the work and now dr ravi is also with her so i think uh, with that uh, dr faisal uh, we should really uh, we should really make the minutes yes ma'am and uh, not only we should make a minutes once you make a minute i would urge that uh, you sit with the team and in case if dr ravi is going to be here for another one or two days take him also on board and uh, meet uh, in person and you know dr kushwa that should help hmm. and then only we should uh, circulate amongst the workshop uh, team and let's have the inputs from everyone very critical inputs and maybe uh, we should be very open to an idea uh, besides and over and above what we discuss and what we could not touch maybe you know some people have some ideas but we didn't get a room to uh, talk or maybe we didn't get a time to discuss because all the presentations of the forenoon um <laughs> uh, you know uh, i believe the afternoon we are having more relaxed discussion so without discussion the presentations uh, the presenter put lot of efforts and all the presenters who have put efforts we had a very limited uh, rather we gave no time for question answer uh, maybe lunch is a culprit you know so hence <laughs> yes i mean uh, yes i mean you meet for this so when uh, anyway not, not, nothing to regret always we could have input from people and uh, that would be our uh, uh, kind of a way forward and then uh, 
I think we will discuss at NIAB, and then we'll put it to funding agency in a very, uh, very clear uh, mode that what is our uh, approach for the way forward. And then we meet in a small, small groups like uh, that is our internal that we'll do later. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. I think Dr. Sandeep has a formal vote of thanks to all. Uh, <laughs> no, almost like a um, so it's almost like an evening and uh, and uh, like a, I would say like a, this is uh, one of the uh, one of the like a uh, finest uh, like a gathering for like a uh, uh, scientific gathering to like a uh, discuss different prospect, uh, especially in uh, uh, in relation to like a uh, Leptospira and uh, JEV, and uh, like uh, and uh, it's a really like a lot lot of uh, effort behind this workshop. And uh, regarding that, like uh, we would like to say thank you. To everyone, and especially our chief guest and uh, guest of honors, and uh, their uh, which uh, find the time and share their thoughts, experience, and expert opinion, especially research gap, uh, which they said to us uh, to tackle those things. And uh, I would like to say thank you to uh, Taru Madam who ignited this uh, flame for this workshop. And uh, he also, she also supported, uh, like, uh, given all kind of support and help, uh, and continuously involved. So thank you very much for uh, being a catalyst for this uh, workshop. And uh, uh, definitely, like as Sir said in morning, like uh, this is brainchild of like uh, Dr. Subir Majumdar and uh, Ravi Sir together with uh, Dr. Faisal. So because of these team, like uh, we are gathered here today, and uh, we had like a very good discussion and uh, just especially like a gaps, like a, how we should move further. And uh, uh, also Dr. Himani, like uh, see uh, all of three like updated what's the like uh, going on and what's the progress and uh, how they're looking forward. So thank you to all of uh, us, uh, all of you and uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, so, uh, and uh, nobody is here from uh, our students and and uh, I would like to really like uh, we are very fortunate we are very dedicated and uh, uh, proactive to admin staff ICT ICT <laughs> uh, yeah Hari. and uh, finance and uh, especially like a uh, um, transportation uh, and accommodation and uh, catering team like uh, and they made this event really <laughs> yeah. thank you very much ma'am and thank you everyone <laughs>